All right, we are live. Box out the box. What's good, A level? What's up? What's up, listeners? What's up, viewers? <laughs> What's up, radio, uh, internet world? What's happening? What's happening, man? What's happening? Yeah, Mark just uh, hit us up. He said he thinks he's backstage. So I'm gonna join the main. The get the main. Yeah, link. Tell him join the main link. We got Brother Funk Doc joining us, and maybe we got Jay Red. He'll probably pop in a little later on. But uh, either way, we're gonna rock out. You know, welcome to Out the Box. This is I'm your host Krill. I got my brother, my co-host A Level. How you doing, my brother? It's A Level. The Wiz, you know what it is. Back in full effect mode on Out the Box TV. You know how I be. Word, 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 word. So you know we um we here, man. We official tonight, man. We got a a really dope show for y'all. Uh, for peeps that's been checking out Out the Box, man. Um, it's just been a busy year, a level, a crazy busy year, man. Yeah, but man. I see it. I see the grind mode. Lots of moves, <laughs> lots of success. I see brother Funk Doc in. Okay. What's yeah. good, brother Mark? Hey, what's going on, y'all? What's good? What's good, what's man? What's happening? What's happening? Chilling, yeah. bro. Chilling. Funk dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just saying, man, um, it's been a lot happening this year, man, for out the box, man. I've been doing a lot. You know, I've been trying to find time just to relax, but we had to bring the people this show, man, because, you know, we the last time we really went, I mean, we did the Elza show not too long ago, but this show was important. I mean, with a, with a project like Jay Electronica's, you know, he dropped earlier this year. I just felt like it was necessary for us to do an album review and, and just a discussion on, on Jay Electronica in general, man. So what's, what's good with you, Mark? Absolutely, man. Uh, Y'all good? Y'all can hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, man. I th I think I think it's needed. Um, I've just been chilling, man. Just just observing, just enjoying the fruits, man. The fruits. The, the great uh, great music in twenty twenty. <laughs> yes, it's right, been, a, right. been an interesting year. Indeed, indeed. So I mean, before we jump into that, I wanted to take some time just to kind of promote the, the the out the box movement a little bit you know we got the channel out the box tv which you guys are watching on youtube right now but i got some other things happening so um i definitely want to like let people know man um if you've been checking us out throughout this year then more than likely you guys have been listening to our podcast which is on um you know um spotify it's on Google Podcast, it's on Apple Podcast. The podcast is called Out the Box Talks, right? And every week, every Friday, I put out a brand new episode. Um, I haven't missed a Friday since probably like February. So um, it's just been a consistent thing, you know. But I'm really proud of the progress that I've made. And I and I gotta thank my brother A Level for being on this ride with me for so long man thank you so much you know your your support is is means so much to out the box you know what i mean thank uh, you. And as well brother mark i just thank you for being here i know it's only been a little bit of time that we've been doing these shows but i really appreciate you being available to join oh i love back, it man. every time I can, every time i can make it make it um i i, I try to participate because i love it man it's just just it's just awesome conversation eye-opening i end up learning a whole bunch of stuff going back and listening to that the albums that we talk about and having a deeper deeper appreciation for it so i thank you for having me definitely definitely you know the pleasure is all mine you know so like i said man just a few things on a few announcements i kind of want to start off with you know like i said we got the podcast that is airing on you know um spotify anchor.fm google podcast right all you got to do is search up out the box talks now, with these podcasts, I just started a Patreon page, right? Well, it's been something in the works for a minute, but I officially launched it. And I want to let anyone know, if you guys have been following us, like the Patreon page has exclusive interview clips that you've never heard before. 
All, all right. right. So, um, it, and it's, it's never been available to the public. So, you know, it's not a lot that I'm asking. It's only about three dollars a month. But you get exclusive ongoing content. And uh, let me just throw up the link real quick because I'm going to be throwing up the banners um, just so folks can see that. Um, as you can see right here, you subscribe for our uh, exclusive interviews. And you can go to patreon.com slash out the box media. Before we end the show tonight, if I got a little time, I'll actually show um, an image of the link. Now, another thing I'm really excited about, I just got to get these announcements out, brother. Another yeah. thing I'm really excited about is the Out the Box Media merch page. So I launched a merch page where you can actually get Out the Box merch. As you guys can see, I got the fitted hat right here, the Out the Box TV hat. I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of this because Out the Box TV represents... You know, me and A-Level could talk about this, like, Out the Box TV goes back to, like, 2009, probably even before that, but definitely over a decade of quality journalist content. So this this hat kind of represents that, that whole journey, that experience. So, you know, if you've been rocking with us for that long or you just feel what we do, definitely go get you a... You know, a, a snapback, the out the box TV snapback, or you could get a T-shirt or 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 um a sweater or a hoodie. You know, we have different colors. I'm gonna be adding more merch, so definitely go check that out. Um, I'm a I'm gonna post up the link. That's the link. It's outtheboxmedia.bigcartel.com. All right, and I mean, I think that's it. I'm not gonna take up too much time, but um, I kind of just wanted to. Share that with the folks. It's crazy. So, uh, big, big ups. You know, again, brothers, I appreciate y'all being here. We're going to open up the phone lines tonight. I got the number working. Last time I wanted to get it working, but finally it's working so we can get the phone lines up. And if people want to call in and talk about this J Electronica album, which we're going to be discussing tonight, feel free to call in. But that's it. Um, I want to keep too much time, but I'm again, I'm happy that y'all are here. I'm going to do some applause. Another applause for y'all. <laughs> All right, so um, the topic of the night is this J Electronica album, this one that just released. It actually got leaked, um, and it's called "Act to the Patents of Nobility." Yes, Lord. my brothers. Yes, you know I know A level want to go in with this one. <laughs> Tell me. How did y'all feel when y'all first heard this album was leaked and that it officially was going to come out? Like, what was the thoughts that was going through your mind? The thoughts was, thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what the thoughts was. <laughs> thank you, Lord. You know, we, really? we've been waiting. I mean, everybody's been waiting for this for, for 10 years. And honestly... I've been having such a good time and great time with written testimony, man, that um, I just received Jay elect for what it is, you know, and just receive it for what it is. So I wasn't even putting my mind anymore on acts to uh, patents of nobility. It was, this was a bonus. It was, was a bonus. It was an added bonus. And honestly, I'm having the greatest time with music that I've had in, 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 a, in a long time, you know, where I can actually say that I'm going back to the music. I'm memorizing the lyrics. I'm, you know, I haven't sit and sat down, and, you know, had a meal with music like this in a long time. I mean, I've listened to albums, but going through your system and go to go to the next album, go, go to the next album, go to the next album. I've actually, this is what I've look, literally kind of turned back the clock a little bit in terms of how, People used to listen to music and say, you know, later, let me just slow down, take my time and get through this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I'm actually having a great time. Written testimony, great appetizer. Awesome appetizer. Act two, Patents of Nobility. It's a fantastic main course. <clears throat> wow. Main course. I like yeah. that. Because it, it, it literally takes you from where Act One left off. Literally, you know the he has this this album 
if you're looking for this album to play out like your traditional hip hop release, no, nope. you're gonna <laughs> miss the point. No, nope. you're gonna miss it. It's gonna flap zing right over your head, and you know you're not gonna get it. This plays out like a work of art, like you're in a freaking museum exhibit. Wow, that's how it plays from track one all the way through. It has the same kind of that's what I'm saying, the same kind of elements, the intros, the long song pieces, long instrumentals that go into the next song. You hear you see tracks, you see the names of tracks on there. Hey, Talia Jam was good, was good. Salute. <laughs> So I mean, you see these song titles, and you think they're each song is like a, a a song where Jay is actually spitting on it, but some of them are not. Well, you know, it's just a listening experience. It's like you're in a museum exhibit, you know, and this is going to the next song, and he has songs where there's Dick Tracy commercials, and you'd be like, what? Like any any average listener would be like, what am I listening to? What what, what is this? You have to kind of be in a mode and in a vibe. And once you get it, even the shiny suit theory song on here again, after it's already appeared on written testimony and after we've already heard it from act one, makes sense from the interlude. The interlude seamlessly goes straight into that song and it just works perfectly. You know, um, I, I'm very happy with this album. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm very um, I'm still listening to it. Wow! And between that and written testimony for me, that's those albums of the year for me. You know, albums of the year. You know, I wanted to ask you about um, written testimony, but we'll 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 actually you know in terms of how it it lives up to this one. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to go to brother Mark, man. Tell me about your feelings when you when you first heard this this project. Uh, I'm gonna try <laughs> not to. to... Um, venture into too much parable and but um it was it was amazing man it was just the context um the, the setup i mean really i'm a big fan of like just amazing and it was just the context Oops, my bad go ahead you good um i thought some i thought i was having a moment um <laughs> that, was, that was my fault <clears throat> but um yeah man i mean if you go back you look you know 2009 you know Exhibit C, all I mean, like, just, just, just tracing back the folklore of this man is just like, it's almost like he doesn't really exist. Um, so to even think about like just the magnitude and the significance of the album, it's dizzying. It's really like you could think about it in so many different ways. You get kind of like dizzy thinking about it. Um, you know, it's just unprecedented. It's one of these pieces. Like I'll put it perfectly. It really is like an installation. Like it's not. It's not like. It's, it's, it's bigger than than just 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 you know a digital download or an album. I can't even really call it out uh, a download. I mean, you know what he's doing is just 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 really just giving you a different approach um, to what it is to put put an album out. And in that, it's not oh, he's not always at the forefront. Um, he's giving you just pieces of sound pieces of just what his like his talent, but also his taste, like where he goes with. You know, hooking up with with you know um, uh, French artists and and you know um, rock artists, and there's points where you 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 feel like you're hearing an Ozzy Osbourne album or a David Bowie album. You get the classic boom bap. Um, you get the really introspective. Like he goes so many different places. It's just like, and that's pretty much who he is. Like he's just like, I mean, just I mean, he he's he's a beast. But he'll sit down and talk to you about, you know, how how can we relate to each other better, um, and 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 just really just the the title of it, Act Two. Of course, we've all been waiting for Act Two, but if you go back and listen to Act One, like on Act One, it's it's only fifteen minutes, and um, or, or maybe fifteen minutes and change or what have you. But Act One is really introspective. It's you know the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. He's really just tapping into his own like awareness and like just trying to figure out who he is as a person. And now you fast forward, it is 10 years later. So obviously there's going to be progression, but you go into, into act two, act two. And the first thing he's talking about is how, you know, he's thankful for God. Um, I, again, I'm terrible with the lyrics, but he's saying, I don't know what to say. Extra honey. In his tea. That I woke up today. 
Swat extra out. honey in his tea, but he doesn't pay homage to the bee. So it's just like it's a life is a luxury, and it's just like you know was these things like you know how how we we don't even speak to the, the person next to us on the escalator, things like that. Um, and it just tells you as as advanced and 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 you know just heady that he is. At the end of the day, he's just a real person, a real human being, and that's the thing I love about Jay is that he really just taps into like just the basic, most elemental, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, um, just parts of his humanity and just just um, existence, and then goes to talk to you about you know a, a, something extra crazy that you never even thought about before. Um, and tells you about different types of podcasts he's listening listen to. So all these things, he's like a, he's like a man child. He's just he's got like that perfect balance of that innocence, that vulnerability, but also just that like you know, I mean, he's a strategizer. Like you know, Act One when 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 um, when Just Blaze was talking about his first conversation with him, he was talking about how do how do you attack this? What's the strategy for this? How do we do? Like he's really like a mastermind, but also is in tune with with, with just the, the minute pieces of, of just just being a human being I mean I could go on and on but but I mean just just feeling that you know just getting that getting this piece of artwork this this piece we've we've anticipated a long time we to the point we almost forgot about it we were happy enough to get um, to get um, written testimony and this is just like just just it's just too much it's just like, <laughs> it's like no. Jay, you want to like slow down like I really was prepared just to go another 10 years. Yeah, another day like try, and I would have been happy. I would have, I mean, I would have been happy, but I would have been, I would have understood it. But um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it, it was really a highlight. It was just amazing, and just, you know, we can go on to the how the album plays out and all that, but it's just really, it really is a, a timeless and unprecedented um, um, uh, event. Absolutely. Wow, well said. This, this is, this is soul music. This is soul music. It's a soulful album because. He's speaking to your soul, just like what Funk Doc just mentioned from the opening track, Real Magic. Sometimes I don't know what to say. It's a genuine miracle that I woke up today. So I got up to pray. You know, and then what he was talking about, we're talking about about, about uh, uh, John the Revelator, but can't even speak to a stranger on the elevator. Mm -hmm. Or step to the side when when somebody when someone's trying to get through on the escalator. I don't regret the haters, you know. Like he's just he's just all over the place with it, but he's saying things that speak to your psyche. You know, he addresses the human psyche, and I think that's what that's that's the selling point, and that's his niche that makes him different than any other rapper out there right now. Wow. Almost makes him extraterrestrial ish. You know what I'm saying? Because even the kind of things he does throughout the album, like I was just reminded of this guy's brilliance because he's rhyming crazy over tracks that have no drum. <laughs> like, why did he even choose, no you drums. know, the Bonnie and Clyde, the Bonnie and Clyde joint? It's just like, there's no, there's just an 808. If you listen to like the end of the song, it's just boom, 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 boom. But you, you, it's like, yo, what is that? But it's just that is the pulse of the song, and he just rides it. He just he adds that whole different element to it. He's like a he's like a he's like a piece of percussion or an instrument. Like he just he can he can carry the track for real. But you know, even the duality from going from from track one, real magic, to the new Illuminati. Like you know, he's just talking about like the simplicities of life, and then track two, he's talking about with the new Illuminati, like. It's just like it's blasphemous to for to for someone to be in so in, in two different spaces in, in in such proximity at the same time, and that's that's who it is. And you know, I feel like as black men, we, we we're unique in that position. Um, you know, we uniquely feel those two ends of the spectrum because you know, at the end of the day, we, you know, we 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 we're supposed to be the protectors, the providers, the fighters, the you know, we're called the alphas, but at the end of the day, you know, a year like this, 2020, you, you understand that there's a, a lot of vulnerability to being a black man. And, um, you know, that's why I connect with Jay because he taps into all that. It's not all about being like, you know, the player, the, 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 the man, all that is about, you know, tapping into your insecurities and, 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 you know, how can we be better? How can we improve? 
So you you want to you want to celebrate you know the 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 virility of being a black man, but you also want to celebrate you know the 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 um the the insecurities that we have too, and and the the, the imperfections and how we can improve on that. And if you can really appreciate both our powers and our strengths, you know, um, it, 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 that's just that's I think that's that's part of the evolution. So. Um, he just really, he just cuts through a lot of that. And, and I, I really, I, I dig it. You know, it's, it's just a lot to, that's what, that, that's what adds to the staying power, the listening power of that album is just because you can, you can use it as a manual and realize, Hey, this brother is like really tapping in stuff that, that I've thought about in the past and, 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 um, you know, stuff that really, you know, you know, is, is, is like food to me. So. Yeah. Wow. I, I understand why it didn't come out 10 years ago. You know, in, in twenty in twenty no way. in twenty twelve, you had what Wayne dropping the Carter Four, um, Drake, Drake you know, popping, yeah. You know, pe people people wouldn't have got it. I don't think people would have got it. You know, it, 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 everything is just about you know fanfare and just let me put this out there and. The, basically the truth is what from what I understand the backstory on this is that he didn't want to release it because he had this fear that people wouldn't get it mm -hmm. people wouldn't get it so he kept blocking the album he didn't mean for this album to be released or leaked what was it 1500 people came together and pulled money together so they can get the yeah. leaked version the, uh, am, I, am I right crow like, yeah I'm going to give you the exact amount According to what I'm reading here, hold on. It was one person, from what I understand here, according to this article on Genius.com, it says, on September 20th, the leaker claimed he had found a version of the project from the specific date of September 3rd, and he would release it if he was if it was crowdfunded. Um, for nine G's within 12 days, various J Electronica fans had completed the funding and he leaked the album to the public. They didn't give the amount of fans in this in this article on Genius, but um, um, it was a number of fans, but it looked like it was just one, it was one person that was like that kind of started the um, you know, started the, the wheels, you know, turning on this, and then it, it came out. It almost felt like they had to take ownership of it, you know, because, you know, because Jay, Jay put that tweet out about, you know, being very appreciative. And of course, Title took the ownership by putting on their, you know, putting on their streaming service um, as like sort of the sole place where you can get it. And, you know, that that is also part of the intrigue for me in terms of like, what is this? You know what I mean? Like, is it something? Is it, 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 and that's the essence of, of of that's kind of like a part of the of of hip hop in terms of that feel, that sort of gritty kind of like, not quite done yet kind of like right. give it to you how raw how you want. I mean, obviously there are songs where you know they end like you know end too soon. I think it was the um, the Merlot and Memories that joint just cut off, and then the yeah. other one, the Tough Love. It sounded like it, it needed another verse. I guess Kanye was supposed to be on that. Kanye oh. was supposed to actually be on New Kaluminati. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 He um word word is is that Kanye, Jay-Z, Just Blaze, and Jay <laughs> were recording. They were hanging tight during the during the making of this album. Mm. And you know, Kanye was in the studio when he was making this album. Yeah. And Kanye got so inspired by what was happening on Act Two that word is is that he's he, he stopped doing what he was doing with with, with Jay to go make Yeezus. Mm. Mm. And that was around so that. It just inspired him to go push push him to go make Yeezus. It's crazy, you know. So that just speaks to 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 this guy, you know, his, his talent, you know. And I mean, like like I said, Bonnie and Clyde, man, I can't say enough about that track. I mean, what is it about that record that you like? I think I think it's a good record. The loop is very loop, different, though. The loop is ridiculous. It's a different yeah. listening experience. You know what I'm saying? It starts out in a French. It's in French. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I first heard it, I was like, what am I listening to? You know yeah. what I'm saying? It, it, it does give off that kind of, what is this? <laughs> and then and then it just continues to progress and it just has you stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. I'm going somewhere with it. 
And then he just starts rhyming crazy. You yeah. know, um, it takes a mid nation of millions to sabotage it. But when it, he said, he said something about, um, but only one Benedict could sabotage you. Yeah. You wanted something. Yeah. He, he kind of took a shot at Malcolm X with that one or two. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if anyone picked that up. You know what I'm saying? I didn't catch that. Wow. He said, you want to, you want to, um, he said, ask Elijah um, about Malcolm Little. It's like correlating the Benedict Arnold with Malcolm Little. Oh, wow. That, you know, ask wow. Elijah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's that's his loyalty to the nation of Islam. I mean, that's, yeah. that's where he is right now, you know, man. But it's just, like I said, you got to listen. Yeah. You have to listen. Yeah. Krill always makes that point all the time. You nah, got to I'm going to keep it 100. You know I saying? haven't had the time to give it the 100% listen. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. Let me give my, my, my spiel on it, you know, as you guys, you know, gave y'all's. Um... I guess the first question, like, you know, what I was feeling, A level, I was actually with you. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? we were celebrating your birthday. Um, when when the post came through, I saw it on OK Player that the, the 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 project got leaked. And then I think that was a Sunday. And then the Monday is when like the internet went in, in a frenzy with it. You Best know, like, birthday gift ever. Yeah. <laughs> word, word. So um I just was like, wow, like, is this for real? Like, you know, like, are we serious? And um, I do have to admit, when I first started listening to it, because I was like, where is it? I, I thought it would have been released to like iTunes or it would have been a release to like, you know, a place that you can actually go purchase it. Because I like to purchase projects, um, especially projects that's big like that. You know, I like listening. To, yeah, I still got an iPod. I'll listen to it on my iPod. <laughs> um, um, but I was like, damn, do I got to really do this title thing? <laughs> right. It's also cool to know that it was also on YouTube that you could you could you could listen to it. Um, so I was able to listen to it. And I got to say, when I first heard it, I, I did hear a lot of tracks that I had heard already. Maybe let me not say a lot, but at least a few tracks that I've heard already. But I knew it was a project that it was going to take some time, right, to to really fully grasp and really get through. Um, it definitely sounds different. It doesn't sound like anything I've heard this year. It actually sounds different to written testimony, mm -hmm. yet similar. And I'll explain what I mean by like by that. I guess the similarity is the fact that you hear J.E., you hear J. Electronica, you hear his sound. He has a certain sound. So you hear it on both albums. That's probably the biggest similarity, but other than that, like, it's two separate albums. The album is an experience. It takes you through different moments, you know? And there's a lot of, like, tracks that, I guess if you're listening to it, you don't even realize like he's not rapping on this track. Like it just it just sounds like a little yeah. segue, but it doesn't feel like an instrumental track, right? It's it not just, disturbing either, you know. Right, it's not disturbing. It feels like it's just a part of the body of work. That's what I'm getting when I listen to it. So it's one of those projects that I'm a little concerned about because because it came out as a leak. I, I'm apprehensive that there might be some missing parts to this project that didn't really fill out the way it probably would have been if it was like a big campaign and it officially released. So it may take me a little bit more time before I say, okay, this is the best thing, you know, but it's definitely one of, one of the better releases of the year. So I'll say that because <laughs> I got more to, to talk about, but, I'll just talk with you. <laughs> so um let's I guess let's move on to the next question. Let's talk about things we got a little one <laughs> on the bike. Hey little <laughs> yeah, that's right. Join the out the box team. <laughs> so, so, so um 
I guess, yeah, that's my next question. Like, what were the tracks that really stood out to y'all? Like, when y'all were listening to it? And, I mean, there were tracks that I was already familiar with, but um, there's some new tracks on there that a lot of us haven't heard yet until it, it came out. What were some of the tracks that immediately hit y'all when y'all were listening? I know you said Bonnie and Clyde, but were there others? Real Magic. Real Magic. Oh, no. He has a great opening tracks. He has some of the best intros that I've ever heard. You know, the kind of intros that kind of grip your attention and grab you from the moment the album opens up. You know, and same thing on Written Testimony. It's just a great openings. And the real, real magic is like, it plays out the same way. It hasn't really gone, worn off with me yet. It does the same thing to me every time I play it. You know, it feels like I just woke up in the morning. I'm getting ready for my walk to work. I can play it. Sometimes I don't know what to say. It's a genuine miracle that I woke up today. This is something that that's that's every day. That's not just a one time thing. This is happening with us every day. Yeah, you know, and it's it's kind of inspiring in a way. It warms you, and it, you know, wow, I'm not the only person going through this. Wow, damn, I gotta go to work today. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. You know, and it's it, it and even the music. The music, the piano, you know, it sounds like a monologue. You know, that's what I love about it. Um, also, um, Run and Hide. <coughs> Run, Run and Hide is a dope song. He's There's, actually singing on that, right? It sounds like he's singing on that. That's not him who's singing. That's, um, I'll tell you right now who that is. It's the Bullets. The, the bullets. Oh, I thought it was him singing. The song that he's actually singing on is um, uh, I believe it's. Yeah, I know he's singing on something. Uh, yeah. I walk across the water. Yeah. You found myself. Is that nights? I don't. Round know, I, I don't know if that's rough love or nights of the round table. That's that's uh <laughs> that's um. Uh, letter to Fallon. Letter to Fallon. Letter yeah. to Fallon. Good memory, oh. Mark. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, re I remember that song because the, actually this, there was a single that dropped. Like, I want to Fallon. Yeah, it did come yeah, out earlier. Song. And that beat to me is it was ridiculous. Like, I would have never thought it's so unorthodox. Um, the way the kicks, the way the kicks drop. Um, the little the little echoes in the background, just the um the keys like the that that and those intense keys that just keep popping. Um, it just it just really just. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, it really, I really stuck out to me. So you know, and and th that was the other thing too, like with him. That's, <laughs> the thing with him, like. You know, he has this, this, he has this, this, um, it's like a tick or like a, a trademark or what have you. Um, when he talks about like the 2020 vision is so euphoric, like he said that before, I think on a written testimony. Um, and he says he has like certain like little phrases like the fiery brimstone and, um, you know, talking about Nikola Tesla, like these things, these, these themes, these little, these little images, they repeat over and over again. Um, and it sounds like he's he's rhyming in like a like almost like a circle, like going back to Ezekiel's wheel when he keeps talking about like I'll still serve you that wasabi. Like he brings it up again as yeah. well too. It's just yeah. these like interweaving moments that like make it seem so intriguing to me. Um, said, that yeah. Now I said but, wasabi is one of his favorite words. He uses that word a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 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 um. You know that that was that that was that was a cool moment in terms of you know that 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 record. Um, I will I like um, I think it's the Life on Mars joint with the with the, the Mars, yeah the Tracy joint. Like that's the thing too. I don't know. I, I've I've looked and looked and looked. I don't know the production credits on there. Um, but I've been really heavily into like Alchemist recently, um, like Russia Roulette and and all his little like projects he's put out with different people. And it sounds like Alchemist beat. I'm sorry to the brother who, who produced it if it wasn't Alchemist, but it's one of those joints where like 
it's just the, the eeriness of like the talking about the transistor radio, this kind of like Americana, yeah. um, you know, Mo, he's very heavily into the Wizard of Oz, which is like eerie and bizarre to me, but everybody felt eerie and bizarre. And even like the lore about that movie, feeling eerie and bizarre about it as well too. And he's really into that, that zone. Um, so to hear like a song like, you know, Life on Mars, where if you, I think it, I, I, I think it's a sample of like an old like rock group, like a German rock, like progressive rock group, whatever. But the way that joint is like leaked, like it reminded me when I was a kid and I, I used to think I was Slash, like, 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 you know, with the wah wah and stuff, like, you know, I was like, I felt like doing that. Um, even though that was one of those kind of like, you know, notorious joints where he wasn't really rhyming on it, but it just like sets the mood. And that's the thing about this album. Like, I really am just starting to learn the the track names because I've been listening like everybody else who doesn't have title. I've been listening on YouTube as one continuous piece. Like it's a, like just uninterrupted track. So you don't like you, you hear all these sound pieces going in your heads, but you don't realize I didn't realize Life on Mars was actually a song. I thought it was like, like an intro or interlude or whatever. Um, so it gives you that feel. And I'm I'm all about like the mood, the setting of an album, um, you know, just just how the pieces come together on it. Um, so it is hard for me to really separate like which track is what and which one sticks out. But um, yeah, those are those are the ones that really that really like caught my eye. Um, yeah, Letter to Fallon, that joint was crazy. Um, what's the other one? I think it was um, Night, Night at the Round Table. Um, that was another one where it was like, it was like, boom, 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 boom. Psh, psh, psh. You know, that joint is like, it's just real stoic and real quiet. But, you know, Jay, you give Jay a moment, like, a, of like just a little bit of space and he'll just cut right on top of it. Um, and the, just last thing, the thing I like, uh, the thing I really appreciate about Jay, he just kind of like, he, he's a, a master of this is like understanding the scale of a record. So you go from a, 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 a record that's real conversational and quiet, like real magic. And then you escalate to, to the new Illuminati. And then you go back to, um, uh, road to perdition. The other one with Jay-Z, like he's really like swagging out, like he's really swinging his, you know, swinging his, you know, swinging his pen. Um, so he just knows how to like really like fit into the groove and master these like small little moments and also big like sort of cinematic moments as well equally. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things. Um, I agree, like, you know, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I know I'm going on and on and on, but I'm glad, I'm glad you brought it up about the, the difficulty of listening to this album because it is, first of all, it's, it's actually physically and tangibly difficult to get a hold of at this point. Um, and it, and it also does remind me of like a donuts moment where you're like, okay, donuts is out. Let's go listen to this record. And you're like, what is like, <laughs> Jay, what happened to like, what happened to, you know? Um, and, the, but then you start to really process it and realize you have to get into his headspace and say, what is he trying to do here? Um, and that just takes a, it takes a while. There's a lag for you to really get into, okay, this is what he's doing. This is where he's in right now. I got to keep it I, I, I got to keep it real with y'all man. I didn't say it earlier but I actually went and got the title. I was I was a little nervous to say it. Earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did the title. Um cuz I really wanted to listen to it the way I and I honestly feel like what's on you cuz I thought that the version on title would have been a little different to the version on YouTube. And I really haven't checked it out to see if there was any slight difference but I don't think it is. There's no difference. There's yeah, no. but I just wanted to hear it the way that albums are heard. And I didn't want to have to be, you know, like scrolling, you know, like with YouTube, you got to like pull the cursor back and forth. I wanted to just be hitting the tracks. But even with that, I still have yet to really grasp it fully. But what I can say, like I said, is definitely an experience. Mm -hmm. So um, for sharing that, I will say what my tracks are um let me first do this though i just want to let folks know that are tuned in thank you for tuning in if you're tuning in um live right now uh obviously the episode will be this show will be up for you to check out you know pretty much anytime after we'll leave it up um however um i do have the ticker at the bottom so we are taking live calls so you see the number on the um, 
screen 718-509-9305. So if anyone wants to call in and give their opinions or their thoughts on this J Electronica album, Act Two, uh, it's our topic of discussion tonight. So feel free to call in tonight. But let me get back. So let me just say what my favorite joints are. I would say, um, first, let me say this. Life on Mars is supposed to feature Erica Badu. Did right. anyone hear Erica Badu on that? Because I didn't hear her yeah. on it. But that She would have been crazy on it. But no, I would love to hear her on that song. Yeah, yeah it would have been dope. The feature says Badu. So I'm wondering, is... Is um is she is she did she do the beat <laughs> you know like yeah I don't think she's I think she's not on it yeah she's not on it yeah. yeah it's just one of those weird like Kanye was I think there's is a feature that something like this a song that's featuring Kanye and he's not on it um, right but, well, yeah. well maybe we'll talk about that later but maybe there's like a level just Blaze has said that he still the, the you know this album still needed to be. Yeah, the album wasn't finished. I wasn't finished. There, there was some other tracks that that were left out. It looks like we got somebody calling in. So I'm a, I'm a stall. I'm a stall. We're gonna bring in a caller. I'm not sure who it is, but um, we'll stall for a bit. You're in the out. You're in tune to Out the Box TV. Out the Box Talks. Who is this? This is Krill. Can you hear me? All right, hold on. Let me just make sure we got a caller here. <laughs> can you hear me? Caller, can you hear me? Okay. I'm going to have him call back in. Can you hear me? All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to have this caller call back in. I'm not sure why I'm not getting him. Um, he dropped. So we'll have him call back in. Yeah, but yeah, let me let me continue. Oh, here he is. He's calling again. I'm saying he like it's a he, right? It could be a she. <laughs> mm-hmm. Peace, peace. Yeah, yeah. What's good? Who's calling in? Oh yeah, it's Kai. Oh, what up, Kai? Kai. What's up, Kai? Yeah, hey, that's 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 that's, that's, that's that's my son, Kai De Niro, y'all. What's up, bro? <laughs> What's good, Kai? Good to hear you, man. Thank you for calling out the box <laughs> again, man. How you doing? Yeah, no, nah, um, I'm good now. Nah. He just um, my dad just sent me the link. Just like, he sent me the number, so I, I didn't know what y'all was talking. I don't oh, know what y'all about talking about, but I'm just we, we talking about Axe too, J Electronic. Oh, okay, okay, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> what's what's your thoughts on um Act Two? How you feel about it? Um, I kind of like it better than the first one because really more than a written testimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like it better than the first one. Wow. Tell it's me why. Of, I just like the beats, the beats are better. We got somebody else calling in too. I'm going to tell that person to call. The person that's calling right now, give us a few minutes. We got another call on. You call back a little later. Go ahead, Kai. No, I, I, I just think that the beats were better. Oh, what's, on this what's, one. what's your favorite track on there? Yeah. Especially that um that um that Bonnie and Clyde song. That's like my favorite song on the on the album. Hold on, hold on. Is that your favorite <laughs> because it's your dad's favorite, or is that really your? No, 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 no. <laughs> no that's, that's that's like that's like the first song I heard because I because I really didn't. Go ahead. I hear you. You still there, Kai? Oh man, it seems like somebody else calling. Hold on. <laughs> I can hear you. All right, cool. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, because um, what you call it? That was like re- literally the first song I heard. Word. The, the first song. Because yeah, at first, at first, because like the like the beat, it has like no like it's like it has no drums, so like. 
I was like, what's this? And I was like, and I'm listening to it. And it's like, cause I had, um, I had the speaker on. So like the beat was knocking. So I was like, what's this? <laughs> so I'm like, boy, that's crazy. And then like, he's like, like, I never, I never, like, I never heard a rapper like rap on a beat with no drums. Like that was the first. Cause I was like, yo, this beat is mad weird, but it's good at the same time. Wow. Yeah, Johnny and, Johnny and Clyde is a dope record. It's it's definitely different. The the singing got be making me laugh though. The way they sing, it. you know, it, it, it was weird at first when I first heard it. <laughs> it was first one. Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow. Bonnie and Clyde. I, I actually say it now, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> as funny as it sounds, I'd be like, "Yo, people would be looking at me like I'm." Crazy. I have no clue. That's like what? Like I was like when I heard that, I was like, "What the heck is that?" <laughs> Yo, but, that's up, man. But that, the way that track is loop, that loop, whoever chopped that or whoever sampled, I don't know if it's Jay Elect or whoever it is, man. Like even after he's not rapping anymore, you still, yeah. Hear, it continues to, you know what I mean? Like it's it's crazy. Yeah. Any any other favorites, Kai? Anything else you 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 checking for on the album? Um. Um. There's another song that I like. Um. Hold on. Yo, while he looks for that, I gotta say the way Dinner and Tiffany's goes into Shiny Soup Theory. That's what I was saying. Yeah. I love that bridge. Yeah. It, it, you know what that um, was the, other song, the other song I like is Road to Petition. Hey, Petition, yeah. Petition, yeah. Petition. It's a good one. She airing out. Jay Z. Airing out. Yeah, yeah. I heard that record actually. On- nah, I'm gonna I'm I'm leave the live and I'm a, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna join the live and leave the call so um, more people could join. So. No doubt, man. Thanks for Peace, calling. Guy. Peace, Kai. Appreciate yeah, you. Thank you, Kai. Appreciate you. It's funny that he would say that. Being a you know, being a young man, just I feel like you need an extra amount of patience to to really appreciate this album. So I see you, Kai. Just you, you just it, it just pulled you in. That kind of different, you know, sort of eccentric thing kind of kind of pulled you in. So that's cool. That's a cool perspective. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we had another call in, another caller calling in. We couldn't pick up the line because we had another caller on already. So you can call back in now. Um, now's a good time to call. So um, the number again is 718-509-9305. It's Out the Box Talks, Out the Box TV. We're talking about Jay Electronica's album, uh, Act Two, Patents and Nobility. So we got the caller calling in. Let's let's pick them up. Peace. Who's calling? You in tune to Out the Box? Caller, are you there? Can you hear me? <laughs> Caller, can you hear me? I'm not sure what's happening, but I got him on. All right, caller, you're in tune to Out the Box. Can you hear me? You might want to mute your um your video. Not sure why the person, why the individual's not hearing me. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Peace. Who's who's calling? Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. Who's this? Hey, uh, this John calling from Los Angeles. Hey, what's up, John? Thank you for calling in, man. You in tune to Out the Box TV, Out the Box Talks. We talking about Jay Electronica tonight. You got a comment you want to leave about the yeah the album? Hello, say again, brother. I said, go ahead. You got, you got a comment you want to leave about the um about Act Two, Jay Electronica's album? We talking about that tonight? Yeah, man. I know all. I'm pretty much yeah. I'm pretty much dealing with Jay Electronica. I definitely want to talk about it. Indeed, indeed. How you feel about the new album? The Act 2 album you um, just released not too long ago. Did you hear it? I feel that 
I feel that uh, I feel the problem pretty much is is uh, the engineering. Mm. Uh, the engineering pretty much, and the fact that it should have been shorter. Uh, with a lot of rough drafts on the project. Um, the only problem with Jay Electronica is his just this, this, this thing of this completion. If he can just complete, um, he will be able to have a, a great, uh, uh, an amazing body of work. He has a lot of tracks unreleased. He has a lot of tracks on YouTube. He has a lot of tracks unreleased that Just Blaze has. You know, that he has the most death, you know, and, you know, that he has a release, you know. So it's like, um, I love the experience. I'm actually, I'm happy the fact that, you know, it's released. Um, but I'm kind of like, uh, I'm not skeptical, but I'm just, um, it's unfortunate that it can't, it, it doesn't really represent him in the best light possible because of the, the uh, I'm as far as the, um, the way the production is in terms of the quality of it. Um, that's it. And then the part is in the fact that it's not shorter. Mm. It was this shorter, if it was short to 10 songs, you know, and the engineering would have been good, it would have been something more you can grab. Kind of like how Ren, Ren Testimony was as right, far right. as like how short it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the uh, issue with it. But I love the songs. I love Real Magic. Real Magic is, is uh, um, you know, fantastic. It actually goes with the times that was going on right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's not dated. Uh, New Illuminati uh, is dope. It's kind of dated because of the, some of the things he says with the Bill O'Reilly thing, Bill O'Reilly thing and stuff like that. Nobody really pays attention to him no more. <laughs> um, and, uh, Road to Perdition, I heard that in 2013. Um, that was pretty much the best lyrical track he has on there in terms of him, you know, rapping on a, on a full, you know, song. Um, he pretty much displayed, you know, that Exhibit C type of film on, on that track. Um, so he has that. Uh, Dinner at Tiffany's was dope. You know, um, how it intertwines with uh, the shiny suit theory. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and what else? Life on Mars was dope. Um, that's a uh, lot of track, John. Yeah, man, it's just, it's, 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 I think it's dope. It's just again, it's just the uh, it's just that I wish I wish it was short. Um. I wish that uh, the quality was better, but nevertheless, I'm enjoying the experience of it. Um, but uh, this is actually better than a written testimony, just for the fact that you kind of get the feel from Jay Electronica that you want it. Right. Um, in terms of being solo by itself, and I think that's what everybody wanted. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually have no problem with a written testimony because I talked, it's funny because I talked to Joe, Joe Budden on an IG and <laughs> he said he hates the project. So, but it's funny that I brought up, you know, um, Ray Kwan, who pretty much had Ghostface on every song on his first album. Right. Uh, so then he was like, well, you know, that's a great big album. I'm like, dude, so you can't talk about his electronica. Right. You know, in terms of him having somebody feature on the project most of the time, if Ray Kwan did it, it was cool. Like John, if, if it was a classic. It's a pass. It's like it doesn't work that way. Well. Right. You know, um, what's dope about the electronic is he raps on weird production, and his main focus his main focus is for you to catch his voice. He's so he's so gifted uh, that he can. Run, I've seen him in concert in 2014. We had a common uh, the No Smiling concert. He can run a concert a cappella with no beat. That's how powerful. His voice. That's a good point. And the fact that the fact that he still talks about ten years after when his when he was supposed to do what he was supposed to do, that's big violence. And a lot of people are hating because he's not following the regular tradition mm -hmm. of what an album is supposed to be like, what it's supposed to sound like, and when he's supposed to come out. That's that's 
that's the point of being an uh, individual and being an artist is you doing what you want to do and not following what everybody does. And right. I think a lot of people get jealous behind that because they have to stay relevant in order to do certain things, say certain things. He doesn't have to do that. It's like when you watch, when you watch Just Blaze on the interview, when he's talking about the project, he was saying that Jay Electronica is on his own time. He does things on his own time and he, his train is on schedule. That's true. Yeah, I mean, he 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 he's definitely you know I mean? an extraterrestrial type of artist. You know, um, I definitely yeah. agree with you. I think sometimes people are just using this whole Jay Z narrative to kind of discredit, you know, him as an artist and say, "Oh, it was just Jay Z, Jay Z." But did you listen to what Jay Electronica was saying, though? Did you listen to what he was saying? They don't do that. If he wasn't listening to what he was saying, you wouldn't be talking about Jay Z outshine him. No, Jay-Z is in Jay Electronica's mm-hmm. You know? He's in his mm-hmm. Wow. Right. He did now. If you listen, if you listen to... I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. No, I said that. That's a great point you, you, you made, John, man. But go ahead. Continue. Yeah, yeah. So, when Joe Budden was saying, you know, he pretty much uh, murdered... Uh, Jay-Z pretty much murdered him. I said, bro, I really have to watch what you say because... When you look at the album release, I looked at the album release on IG, and Jay and, and Jay Electronica was rapping every lyric from every song that Jay Z was doing. So if somebody somebody wants to put out something and they feel like they got body, if they're singing the words to the person that they're collaborating with, or or have them featured on the project, uh, he he shows great no. admiration for Jay, but I never felt at one point yeah. in time that Jay Z washed Jay Electronica right. at all. I think no. I think I think most people were surprised that Jay Z could even try to keep up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> could fit into that space. Right. It's, it's a, yeah, but, but but the thing that people are missing the point of is that's not Jay's M- that's not Jay Z's mo to rap about the same uh, the, the top of the content that Electronica rap. That's another thing that people didn't take consideration. People are calling it a five percent project. But what it is is people are very ungrateful in this project and his work, so what he does and, and, and his uh, songs or whatever he does, it's not going to be appreciated until years later. People are just very ungrateful, you know, and people, and we just live in microwave generation, you know, and people just don't appreciate substance. People, we live in a fast food generation where people don't eat fast food, a home-cooked meal. That's pretty much the concept you say. <laughs> I think this project is comparable to what Wu Tang might have been accomplishing with that uh, once upon a time in Shaolin kind of situation, where it's just like you're gonna have to open mm-hmm. this album up maybe like how many years later for you to really get the point. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you think so? A level? You think it's yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And I don't, and I don't really say that about a lot of albums. I think this project. I think his mixtape, I think when you listen to his mixtape uh, with the F of the J Electronica, I think you'll get a better idea of how good of a MC he is. Because it has more songs, and it's more in depth to what uh, his projects are that he's released, or uh, the, the um, project he featured with, uh, with J, the um, written testimony, and this one that was, it was leaked. This is not when he wanted to come out, this was leaked. So, um, you get a better understanding of who Jay Electronica is if you um, listen to what the, what the app is to Jay Electronica, the mixtape. You, you'll get a, he's rapping on Dilla Beat. He's running, he, you know, he's rapping on unorthodox beats with ridiculous wordplay and delivery and cadence. Like, the dude is really a god MC. It's just, it's just unfortunate, again, that he doesn't have enough music out. And um, and then a uh, body of work to support that. Mm. He 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 he's so gifted that when a lot of people have to say a lot of words in order to get the point across, he can say one or two things. He can tell a story in one or two things. Yeah, and that's think difficult to do. That's like Shakespeare type shit. That's stuff yeah. that Jay and Nas and Black Thought, you know, are capable of. So let me Those ask you something, Joe. So he. he I gotta say, um, mm-hmm. you said that the your your only issue with the album is that is that is kind of long. You know, it's interesting you say that because when a written testimony came out, a lot of people were saying, "Oh, the project needs to be longer." 
So you feel like it needs to be kind of in between or are you comfortable with the the nine track, 10 track album? I feel like that was what written testimony was like about nine or 10 tracks. Like, would you have been okay with this project being shortened to that amount of tracks? Like how, how short would well, you say you would have liked for this project? The, the problem, listen, 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 listen. The problem is the reason why, uh, the reason why a lot of people were complaining about the uh, written testimony as far as how long it was is because you were getting verses from Jay Z and you wasn't getting what you wanted from Jay Electronica. Okay. So, in other words, in other words, they probably would have taken, and I think from their point of view, they would have been more satisfied if it was like a party sing song because they probably wanted to hear music Jay Electronica. Because they, in their mind, he's getting outshadowed by verses you know, or uh, JV. But if written testimony was a full J Electronica project, just Jay with just a couple of tracks to Jay Z and more J Electronica, they wouldn't complain about um the track listing. Because Push It Deep, remember he released seven songs and each song and everybody's saying that's a classic, right? And that's a seven song. So with seven songs of great quality production and L- lyrics that you can go back and listen to. It's, it's a it's a body of work. You understand what I'm saying? So it makes up for it. So uh, that's an issue for me. But I'm saying as far as um, J Electronica uh, um, kinds of mobility, it should have been shorter. It should have been 10 to 11 songs. Um, I didn't mind the interlude. It's just more rapping on the, on, on that project. And the quality. Okay. That's that's it. It would have been perfect. But if it was gonna be ten tracks, that's the only thing. What would you what would you keep uh, or what would you get rid of? Uh I would get rid of uh Rough Love. Hold on, I'm gonna get the track list right now. That's pretty much uh-huh, go ahead. Uh, so Rough that. Love I would have got rid of because it's pretty much like a rough draft. Okay. Uh, okay. let me see. Hold on, hold on. That's so, a beat though, rough love. But I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Rough love was was pretty much rough. Um, he probably had kind of that. That the reason why I would get rid of it is because, for one, he had that song. Um, when he's kind of talking about Erica Badu on on Life Is Mars, so it it kind of it kind of like um fulfills that. You know what I mean? To so where he doesn't have to have that song. He kind of talked about. It. Okay. Um, Are you saying you're getting rid of? As far rough as that kind. Huh? You say you're removing rough love. You would remove rough love. Yeah, rough okay. love because life on Mars. When he's kind of talking about the relationship between him and uh, Erica Badu, it's it's kind of fulfilling that. It's it's, it's fulfilling oh, that to where okay, like it, it fills it to where um, rough love isn't needed. Okay. So in terms of the content, it's like it's like it's fulfill that idea on a, on a bad relationship or either like you know what I mean yeah, a bad I relationship see. or some toxic something that you know you kind of look back at when you make that mistake or rebuild or whatever you kind of fulfill that that thing I feel on a life on Mars so tough love was not needed to me okay that's one what else um what else would I take out yeah. um. What's the track list? Oh, Real Magic. Real Magic, I'm keeping. Yeah, you got I'm going to go um, to the list. Real Magic, New Illuminati, Patents and Nobility, Life on Mars, Bonnie and Clyde, Dinner at Tiffany's, Shiny Suit Theory, Memories and Murdo, mm-hmm. Better in Tune, Letter to Fallon. Better in Tune. Yeah, Letter to Fallon. You you will remove Better than Tune? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, oh, that's, that's like that's yeah. no, 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 absolutely right, not. That's that's right. the that's the, one the, right that's there. the most fulfilling deepest track on there. Yeah, no. definitely. You're right. Let, uh, let, let it a Fallon, Road to Perdition. Welcome, I think it's Welcome to Welcome to Knightsbridge. Did I say that right? Okay, yeah. okay. Stop right there. Stop that right there. So everything, everything to roll. So you said. What was before Road to Perdition? Letter to Fallon. Letter to Fallon. Don't remove and what was letter after? Fallon, man. Don't remove and what was letter after? Fallon. <laughs> what was? Not yeah, good. Welcome to Knightsbridge. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, what was after Road to Perdition? Welcome. Welcome to Knightsbridge. Are you talking about? He does the Michael Jackson reference. 
your shoes inside your shiny socks on, and crying baby tears inside. Yeah, your I would have got a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so after Road to when so when Road to Perdition, everything after Road to Perdition except the last um, song. Uh, what they call it? Uh, Lotus Flower. Running, run, running hot. Now, ten thousand lotus petals is the last song. Yeah, but ten thousand okay, lotus yeah, petals. That, he's not, I don't like after, it. It's instrumental, yeah. Yeah, he's not even rhyming. Yeah, so that I would say that at the road to perdition. Okay, okay. So if he would have had yeah, that like tracks. that and then just made the track, polished the track, I think that would have been a great body of work for him. Yeah. You know what? After, I think after, you got a good after road to perdition. That. I agree. You got a good so, but but that. again, you know, you got you got people that 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 you know, you got people that because they've done music so long and all that type of stuff that they know what they're doing all the time. And sometimes they you know, sometimes they're so overwhelmed on hearing great music all the time, they kind of like exiles out like a body of a body of work of what would possibly be great because they're so used to hearing great music all the time. Wow! So it's like they have a bias. Oh yeah, it sounds good. Just leave it as is. Instead of actually really going back and doing and doing this and, and actually, you know, making sure that, that everything is what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. It's like they have this like aura around them of just we know what good music is. Sometimes they're wrong, you know what I mean, and they don't want to go about that, you know, because they're in the industry or they or just blunt phase or whoever they are, you know what I mean. So sometimes. Sometimes there's people that got great ears that can really tell me how to how to how to put together body work just by the the hearing and the mood, even though the people are producing whatever or rap or whatever. But sometimes there's just people around, you know, that can actually help put the project together as a project. You know what I mean? Got it. Listen, man. If you look at Kanye. You look at Kanye. I'm sorry, go ahead. Now, go ahead. Finish your thought. I was just saying thank you for calling. Well, finish oh, oh, absolutely. If you look at Kanye, real quick, if you look at Kanye, every time he pretty much, when he first started releasing his music, if you notice, he pretty much took everybody's taste on how his bar sounded and how his delivery sounded. So remember, nobody wanted him for his, with his little raps or whatever, right? They just wanted his production. So he got the confidence of keep going back and getting feedback on how he, how he sounds as a rapper and then with his bar. As soon as he found out, you know, that he, he, he pretty much has a niche, he can pretty much do what he wants to do, how, you know, what he's saying, his concept, then that's when he starts to get more comfortable, and that's when he starts going away of production. And then there you go, college dropout. There you go, the registration. There you go, graduation. You know what I mean? He, he, he got feedback. He got he got help from making his project because he got feedback from people who know what good bar sounds like. Yeah, he actually got a lot of feedback about his production too. I mean, he 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 basically oh, and John that, was, that, was, that was no issue. That his production was no issue. But he, he, he I mean, no he, he, was, he wanted no, to be he, a producer. He wanted to be a producer rapper. Right, but the production. I mean, it's one thing to produce a beat, but to have it perfected and have a sound uh -huh. like you do. Like he went to Timberland. Is yo? How do I make my my snares like crack harder? Um, he went right. to John Bryan, who's right. produced for Fiona Apple and. All these amazing artists and like he he was so humble at the time that he just took it all in and you're right you need that constructive criticism to put it all together um i think you're definitely right i felt like i think i think i do i do understand and and, and recognize your criticism that the project seems a little like unmanned at this point point. and again it's not the final product it's not it, it put out as it was meant to be but it does feel like it does, doesn't have that tethering like guidance there's no ed the editing is not quite there you're right Absolutely, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, but other than that, that's pretty much it, man. I know I took up a lot of you guys' time, but I just definitely want to get my thought out on that. Nah, thank nah, you so much. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. From Cali, right, John? From Cali. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm an MC myself. That's how I can recognize it. Though. That's what's, that's up, what's up, man. Thank you so much for calling in, man. We appreciate the comments and you know your thoughts on this project, man. Um, definitely, um, you know, continue to check for us, man, but we appreciate you calling in. All right. I mean, I, I can't, can love, man. Thank you, John. I, mean, I, I can't yeah. remember. That's, that's the other thing that's so interesting about this re release. If you want to call it that, it's just like, I can't remember 
a leak being like put out in such an official way where it's like we almost forget that this is not really how the album is intended to, was intended to sound or is going to sound in the future. I know there's a lot of sample clearances that have to be issues that have to be dealt with as well, too. Um, so that was also the intrigue of just receiving the album the way it is. And it's sort of like rough, like, you know, this sort of like what's the other one? Um, what's the one? Um, where he's like, he's actually, you, you can tell he didn't finish the lyrics almost. He's like, some, 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 some. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, like, a I lot actually of think that like, works, though. I love it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that works. You don't, know if it's, you don't know if it's intentional, if it's meant to be, is tough love supposed to have a whole, like, you know, bar of just like the instrumental writing out is Miracles of Merlot just to put just cut off like that. Like, you don't know what's meant to be, or so that that's kind of the cool thing, too, is just imagining, like, where do we go from here? What is the next move for this project? Does it get finished? You know, um, um, brother Mike, right? He um, he brought up the whole thing about, about um, which is true, about Jay being sort of like, not really like sitting with something for a long time. And that's, you know, mo like Miles is like that too. Miles Davis, like he'll, he'll put something down. He gets bored with it, goes on to something else. Like you wonder how much longer Jay will sit with this project if there, who knows, will there be an official release? Um, to, to finish it or will he want to go on to something else? Is he tired of it or what have you? Um, so it's just, it's a, it's, it's a kind of a tough pill to swallow because you kind of have to accept it for what it is in hopes that, you know, a, a finished, you know, version or, or something more polished will come out, whatever it may, may be in what form. Word, word. Yeah, man. It's, it's so much thoughts around this album and, and, and like the caller was saying, man, like, it's so many different ways, you know, like I, I didn't think that this album could be shortened, but when he put it in that way, mm -hmm. if you do take over, take out those last set of tracks, which is really just like people singing and <laughs> instrumentals, um, it, you know, um, it doesn't bother me personally, but I could understand um, if it was to shorten it. it would, I think just seeing the 12 tracks also makes a difference to the listener. Um, but um, yeah, so I thank John for that insight man all right so let me give my my favorite because i didn't get to that yet <laughs> we still got the phone calls if anyone wants to call you can call but let me do that before anyone else calls um i'll say um hmm i'm not gonna say bonnie and clyde <laughs> <laughs> I, but, I think it's a dope track um all right i must i'm gonna be straight up my favorite track on this album is better in tune I had liked it from the first time it came out and I still like it. And I love how it plays within the scope of the album. That's the last one of the samples I can actually, actually looked up kind of cause Edo, Big Ed, me, the E, we were oh. talking about it. And I, and I found that it's actually, it's, it's a, a sample from the Wizard of Oz. Oh um, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a sample from the Wizard of Oz, uh, uh, Dr. Marvel and all this, you know, just just part of the whole J Electronica lore. So, and he he, the way it, you're right. The way it, who would have thought that type of sample, that type of sound would would play out perfectly for him. Yeah, definitely wrote to Perdition too, mm. and I mean I had heard it already, but it's just one of the records that when it comes on, it just you know it has the um, it ha what what was the song Exhibit C? It has that kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Exhibit C, but it's it's the closest record on this album to Exhibit C in terms of that sound. Um, did did Just Blaze do that beat? You might have. Might have, might have. Might have. Okay. Um, those are my two favorites. Uh, I feel like what's the one that? Dun, 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 that's I think I think I missed that's the um, welcome to Nice Bridge. I call so that that's another one that I like. Yeah, that's welcome to Nice Bridge. I think that's yeah, what I was talking about. I think I call it uh, Night of the Round Table or something like that. But yeah, yeah. The reason why I like that one is because it sounds different. Uh -huh. it has it has I I I know you brought up Alchemist earlier. But it has, I won't say it's Alchemist so much, but it has that kind of like low cut, you know, um, how you say, lo-fi producer type. It's type gritty. It's, it's gritty. gritty. 
it reminds me of Doomish type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. something like that together with, with the with the the consecutive snares like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why which is why I say stuff like that does does and can work because guys like Doom get away with that. You know, his stuff is not the most polished stuff in the world where it's like <laughs> mastered and crispy, clean and sparkling. You know, but that's not what we love Doom for. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We don't go to Doom for that. So you know, hip hop, hip hop has very, very gritty moments to it. You know, some of the best hip hop has a gritty, gritty sound to it. And you know, I just appreciate it. I, you know, I think, you know, I'm I'm always listening for things that sound a little different. Um, that not everybody might be attracted to. I mean, mm-hmm. as long as it's not whack, I think that that one stands out to me too. Um. And like I said, A-Level, I mean, Bonnie and Clyde is not one of my favorites, but it's definitely a dope record. It's definitely I, I, I a don't dope see how. I don't see how it's not. It's, <laughs> I don't see how it's not. You, you, you're really looking past the thing, man. You really need to go back to it. You really do. <laughs> oh, man, the, the singing, man. The singing. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you. Man. I, I mean, I get it. it it's, 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 not, it's not something that it's going to like, jump out at you right away but me i'm the one of those yeah yeah weird, weird kind of guys you know when you. the beats you know what i'm saying so it's a dope record i'm not gonna front i i, I just in terms of like my favorites on the way it, he's flowing to that at the same time too that's if, impossible. again a level i'm gonna listen again the, 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 days go, the singing on it if the song if you if you separate i mean it's hard to say but if you separate the singing from it and just listen to like how the 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 loop of it, the the music, the how the, the acoustic guitar and the strings are playing, and just the writing, the urgency, just like and that eight oh eight, boom, boom. Is that boom. one of your favorites, too, Mark? Um, yeah, it sticks out like for real. Like, um, it does stick out to me. Um, I, I'm not gonna put. I I will I will say. I mean, it's not it's not at the top. It's not at the top. But I do mm-hmm. I do love that song. I do love that song. But definitely better in tune. Life of Mar- Life of Mars. Um. What's the other one with the um, the rock guitar? I forget the name the name of it. The one before Life Before Mars, Real Magic. Yeah, that joint. I mean, I, yeah. yeah. Um, I definitely uh, like Dinner at Tiffany's going into Shiny Suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm willing to listen to it just to get to that moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I tell yeah. myself, like well, the way just like waiting for that moment. Da-na-na. You know, like just for that those those chords to come in. Um, it's just, it's, it's, I mean, for what it is, you know, rough draft, first edition, whatever, um, it's, it's really a well put together, you know, conceptually. And it does remind me of act one in terms of just like, just his, his sensibilities are just like, they just, you really can't, it's just, it's, he's got some weird sensibilities that just really, if you, if you think about it and get into his head, it really makes sense once you get into his head. Um, so it's like, why would, how would rhyme over the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind soundtrack? And he just puts it together. Um, and there's some moments like there's like in act one, there's like these, like, I think they're like little boys or something speaking in a different language. I don't even know. It's like Arabic or something, but it's like mm-hmm. a, it's like a three minute conversation. And that's, that's like, fi- like part of a 15 minute EP. Like <laughs> that's just who he is. And it's just, it's cool. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just kind of cool to just, identify someone who thinks in that way um when you you try to really you know you think you think music is being pushed to the boundaries and you get a guy like jay and again just to quote quote um uh quote just blaze you know he was saying how he was getting kind of bored with hip-hop at the time and he came when he he came across jay and he was like this brother like i appreciate him because he's taking chances he's taking risks and that's all that's really just the greatest the greatest sort of like, like rush that artists can get at this point, even Jay as, as accomplished as he is when he finds someone or he, he takes a risk and it, and it works. So he takes chances musically or fi- like financial, whatever that that's, he's, you know, Jay is that guy. He is like, it's points where he, you feel like he has nothing to lose. So just go out and try whatever he wants. And, um, you know, this is the end product. So it is, it's a, it's a huge accomplishment. Definitely, you know, redefines, you know, what hip hop is. Jay Z has literally said that Jay Z, Jay Electronic is his favorite artist. He said that. Wow. Yeah. He said this is this is this is why he has stayed with him thus far this long. 
he had to push him to do a written testimony to kind of encourage him, like, you know, hold by the hand, so to speak, but not in a bad way, but in a way like, yo, I want the world to hear what it is that I hear. You know what I'm saying? So there's a genuine admiration coming from Jay-Z in itself. So a lot of Jay-Z fans just perceive it as just Jay, Jay Electronica is just all on Jay-Z and ah. No, it's not. I think it's a mutual admiration thing, you know. Yeah. It makes you wonder if written testimony is really the album that that Jay Electronica wanted to put out, like, you know, because it's more of a traditional format to it. Um, you almost feel like act two is really the, the type of the musical piece that he would have put out and you know has been working on. Um, and I think part of it, I think, was stalled a little bit because there really was no single. Um, and it was kind of like this almost, I'm not going to make, you know, anything bigger than it is, but almost a clash between like, you know, Jay Electronica and him, you know, and, and Rock Nation as like, yo, we need a single. We need to put this thing out as a project that's going to be marketable and make money. And, um, I think part of that stall that, you know, that, that, Jay, that, that um, that I was talking about was kind of like, they, it took them a while to figure out how they were going to like kind of put music out with this brother um, who is so unorthodox and doesn't fit into the mode of, you know, at the time, you know, J. Cole and Rihanna, Beyonce, everybody on the roster who was, you know, you know, keyed up and ready to go and make these hits and make millions of dollars. And <laughs> Jet Leck was not, not, his music was not catered to, the, it was not catering to the, you know, the blockbuster, the crossover, the mainstream, the, you know, the, the sold out crowds and, you know, um, it was just a different, a different artist and a different person who they had to really kind of like corral and, 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 you know, get to really work in their, in their system. So I think, the, I think written testimony is probably the best sort of solution, the, 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 the best of both worlds. And now we're understanding with act two, that's really the direction that I think is probably a more natural direction for him. And I think we've been so accustomed with putting artists especially the ones that we love in a certain box and in a certain place mm -hmm. that we don't really give them the opportunity to really present something different to us. You know, our ears, hip hop listeners ears have kind of really dulled down over the years where it's just like, okay, this song, give me this type of track. Give me a song for the club. Song skip. For the, yeah. Skip. The, 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 the street banger. Oh, mixtapes and then and that's the whole listening experience so now you have an artist like jay electronica comes along and does a, a, a gives you a bonnie and clyde and you're like what does this mean what is this? so you hey, got Kyrie, I am, he, he, he encapsulated that experience perfectly it was like yo what is this he didn't turn it off though <laughs> he kept listening he was like okay all right but he was like this is kind of like a weirdo beat but I'm not going to turn it off. I'm just going to experience it for what it is. I'm going to see where this goes. I want to yeah. see where this goes because I'm actually looking for a new experience here. You know, because for me, I, I was getting bored with rap. I was getting bored with hip hop. You know, like it's just it's 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 like, you know, I've heard one. I've heard them all. And it's, it's just the same old experience over and over again, you know. But uh, this guy right here just makes me just wow, this is, keeps it interesting, you know? And it's not to say that no, no one else is out there. There's plenty of great albums out there right now. Like, for this one right now, I mean, I might as well give you my my, my top five for the year. Um, I'm going into... Hold it, hold it, hold it. Nah, go ahead. Go, give me... Give, give, <laughs> too much. We got to do a show for that. Oh, breaking news. Coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to give us a couple, I mean, don't give us too much, though, That's man. Like, that's that's far. That's far. It can change. Twenty twenty is not over yet, bro. We still in October. Ooh. You know what I mean? Hey, go ahead, go ahead. Do your thing. It's, uh, it's Acts Two: Patents and Nobility, Written Testimony, King's Disease, uh, the Allegory, and um, Don't Fight Your Demons. The rest of development joints. Those, those are wow. Nice. Those nice. Are my joints. Solid. But between those, between those right there, man, I'm, I got enough music to last me for the next how many years? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. I'm good. Yeah, you know, I was gonna ask. This is the this is the big question right here. 
between a written testimony and act to the patents of nobility, which project is the better one? <laughs> LP is the better one. I knew you're gonna do this, man. <laughs> I got to put it out there. Yep. Y'all want me to go first, or y'all want to go first? Yeah, I, I let I let you take it, Funk. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. go ahead, Funk. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna just answer the question and get it over with. But I'm gonna just say <laughs> testimony. Hey, if you had you can't you can't say you got to just go with one. If you just had to, I'm gonna just say written testimony. Just okay. Yeah. Wow, that's that's. I'm just saying, I, I like I I, I can't think of this credit act too, but I'm gonna go with written testimony. Just okay. I felt like it was what I, like you know, and I. <laughs> it's funny because when brother Mike, the, uh, the brother, I think his name is Mike. I keep calling him Mike. When he called in, you know, he was like, you know, I was, I kind of threw me off a little bit, and I, I'm understanding like. You know, written testimony for me, even though it was nine, eight and a half joints, Jay Z was on a, a whole bunch. I just, I felt like just, you know, just the, it had the meat and potatoes that you really like. I mean, it was, it was, it was, uh, I guess act two was a little more unexpected, a little more off, off what I expected and took me a while to get into. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just say written testimony because after this, like, I was, after the first listen, I was, I really, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was locked in. Um, yeah. Act two, I really had to sit with it. Yeah, written um, testimony is an easier listen. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's just easier listen. Um, you know, it was just more of what I like expect. I don't know, but but I'll just say written testimony. Just leave so, it there. I, I'm not mad at you. A level was out of the two. Uh, for me, I don't know if this, I don't know if either one is better than the other. It's all about you gotta what pick one A level right now. You it's gotta, what I'm in the mood for, you know. What? You know, um, which one, which if you had, to, if you had to make a choice between the two A level, you got to pick one. That's pick tough. one. That's tough, man. <laughs> that's tough. I, I would cry if I had to choose either or <laughs> literally cry. Um, as I say, I say uh, written testimony. Okay. Testimony. Okay. You know what, guys? I think I would go with 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 um what you guys are saying too, and not just because you guys are saying that. Like I, I did think about this, and I think it's for the same reason that Mark says, right? Like written testimony just hits you quicker. Now, I do believe that there's a strong possibility that as I sit with um act two it might end up being the one in the long run that i like better but um i agree with both of you all and i, I think i will go with a written testimony if i, I had say to. a written testimony but there are some heavier songs yeah act two yeah that was on act two that's 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 much heavier than any song on, on written testimony yeah, yeah. and it really, it really is comparing like apples and oranges because i'm a I, the reason why i like like uh written testimony is because i am a fan of the short album the short album which is you know the old the the illmatic theory just just hit them it doesn't matter if it's 35 minutes 40 minutes just if you got heat back to back to back to back you're going to win every time but you can't really put act two in that box because it's not about the short listen it's about it's about like getting through the whole thing and just you know just having it stand together as one track, which I is mean, kind of the thing I enjoyed about listening to, like just streaming it as a continuous track. We already said that it's different. Mm -hmm. Look, just right now, Funk. Earlier, we was just talking about which, what, which, which songs are on which tracks. We didn't even know what the track names are. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, just, just like headphones and yeah, I'm just like listening to it as one <laughs> comprehensive piece altogether instead of, you know, twelve or thirteen different songs. You know. You don't. We're listening to it as one piece, so it's really kind of hard to compare it. You know. Yeah, I hear you. I gotta say, this this project, you know, um, like I said, it's it's definitely something you gotta sit with, but it doesn't hit like like immediately like how um written testimony hits. Because 
on written testimony is on some. It's, it's over. It's game over. <laughs> so just let me done. Uh, real, real magic does it for me, man. Well, if, we, if we're talking about opening tracks, like for me, that's it's. I love them both yeah. equally. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like real magic is good, but it's just more of a, like a slower opening, like. Like the applause that comes on on the opening track of uh, Written Testimony is on a whole other level, man. Let's listen. Yeah. Slow or fast or whatever. For me, it has the same impact. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, it just, it just feels like the opening track on Written Testimony just has more, like, more energy to it. And maybe that's what I'm attracted to, is the energy. Yeah. But I, I hear you. I hear you. It, 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 it hit. It's all about what I'm in the mood for, you know, at the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's really, it's really tough to compare, which is cool because it's, you know, um, that just goes to the, the the gifts that he has, you know. Maybe, you know, it's just a flex in terms of he can make two different albums and still, you know, come across and excel in both with both techniques, you know. Mm. Now, let me ask y'all, do you guys – feel like Jay-Z's presence on a written testimony had something to do with the type of impact the project had? Like when we talk about it kind of hitting a little quicker, do you feel like it was the alignment with Jay-Z? Like he kind of helped to boost that? You say no A-level? Okay. No. I'm I, Unlike, you know, many people, I'm not I'm not in complete awe of, you know, Jay-Z making written testimony that much better. To me, that's like a slap in the face to Jay Electronica. You know what I'm saying? Um, do I like Jay-Z being on there? Oh, and them, you know what I'm saying? But for me, I think that's just, I think you just, uh, people kind of use that to kind of take this, take, take the helium out of the balloon, so to speak. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? discredit that man and that's not fair you know what i mean that's the only reason why i don't really care for that whole jay-z thing too much you know what i mean not necessarily because jay-z makes the song makes the album better or greater it's just that people are just using that to discredit this man's talent and that's and that's, and that's not cool yeah i'm not i'm not asking from that angle uh but i know that there are people out there that are doing that but for me it's more so like the the sonic right the sound the sounds of it like same. Um, the usually, same thing. Yeah, usually when Jay is on a like, if you think about Jay Z's recent albums, it it has that feel to it. It's like it hits a little quicker, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and like if you talk about his album with Beyonce and and even the the what was that what was the album he did um the four 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 album, it it. it it's it's similar. I could actually see some similarities with 444 and a written testimony. So when you look at Jay-Z's recent catalog, like I feel like his albums have been shorter, but they've the tracks have just been hitting quicker. You know, I feel like a written testimony, if you it's more like the the hit album as opposed to um act two. But yeah. I was just curious to see if you guys thought his presence had something to do with the sound hitting like that. Not necessarily that he's taking away from it. I think I think Jay Z. It's a great it's a great look for Jay Z to be on that album. It's a great look for Jay Electronica to be right. on the album as well too. But you know, yeah. it's a great look for Jay Z. You know, to continue the legend or the folklore from yeah, yeah. 44, 444. Right to an album doing a, a album with an artist like Jay Electronica, you know, but for Jay, for Jay Electronica, for Jay Z, I think after the ghost of soldier slim, I don't, I don't really need to hear Jay Z for the rest of the album. Ghost okay. of soldier slim, you know, Jay Z aired it, airs it <laughs> out the box. So he comes in and he's out. He that little it. thing going, do you <laughs> I shoot from neck up? Like I was like, yo, Jay, Jay. Yeah, he's he's so he's, he's trying, trying to kill. Through. He's trying to kill straight out, straight out the gate, you know. Yeah. And that's what people got overwhelmed yeah. with. But if you live, really listen to the rest of the album, like the never ending story, Jay like runs away with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He runs away with it. Jay doesn't take away from him. Like they 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 both have their own unique sound, and the, and right. it works. 
equally on this. Yeah, project. I definitely felt that rain ghost like feel like you just it's just it's just a harmony. Um, and it's just like you you look like I, I felt like I feel like Jay definitely like added, you know, added to the album. Um, but I didn't feel like he like I definitely did not feel like Jay Electronica was using him as a crutch. Yeah. Um, the only, my only first thought about the album is that this album might not have dropped if it wasn't for Jay Z. Like I feel like Jay Z definitely like kind of like yeah. pushed him I, out on the stage. Like yo, this time, come on, we, you know, pandemics, come on, let's let's just get it done. You know, now is the time. Like you know, the, the, we need to hear us from you. Maybe, shoot, maybe even Puff. Puff might have been like, yo, Jay, let's go. Like. <laughs> It's your time. You may give him a little pep talk, um, you know. So I feel like it definitely. I will credit those brothers to definitely prompting that album to come out. But um, I can't really feel. I, I don't really feel like Jay is the reason why the album sounds that way. But you're right. I do hear those similarities. You know, songs like um, uh, "Family Feud" and um, uh, yeah, well, yeah. the other joints. But th there's a couple of joints like where. You know, Jay is rhyming over crazy samples that you would never hear him. Like, you know, the weights, the song structures are crazy. Mm -hmm. I feel like that those those similarities are, are there um, with with written testimony. But um, you know, I mean, shoot, yeah, it's just it's just it's been a, it's just been blessings. It's been <laughs> it's been so many blessings, you know. Right. Right. Um, you know, I, I wanted to also say, do y'all think? I feel like. And I, I you y'all could tell me if y'all agree or disagree with this, but I feel like if a written testimony didn't drop, we probably wouldn't have gotten act two this year. I think a written testimony set the stage for act two to come out. And I'll say that because people were complaining when a written testimony came out. Mm -hmm. at, because it wasn't what they were expecting. And I think it might have pushed it was so the answer. Jay might have Jay Z might have <laughs> opened the door for not just this album, but it's not just a written testimony, but it might have sparked us getting act two, you know. So yeah, that's a good point. Big 2020, man, for Jay Electronica. What a year for him to release two. <laughs> two for one. I'll take it. Two for one. Wow. Man. Two on one year. Two in less than a year. It's it's been one year, man. And I and, and like I said, brothers, I you know it's October. We coming to the close of October. We definitely gonna do our, our end of the end of the year um review. What do you what y'all think? Should we do that in late November or December? I think we should wait to December. What y'all think? December makes the most sense. Yeah. yeah. It ain't and it, it ain't even got to be the end of December, but you know. People be dropping little surprises around Thanksgiving, so you know who else's birthday is around December. You know, you know, you know, Hove man. Already you know, <laughs> know he might. He might do something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who else is to drop? Like we got, we got Nas that came out this year. You think we might see a Kendrick release this year? It's been a little while. I don't know. The video be uh, uh, this year. It would be yo. Mic drop if, if if he drops this year. I, I just feel I just feel like this is the year. I mean, like you have Nas, you have Jay Electronica, and in, in essence, you have Jay Z with new material. Um, and this is all in the wake of a pandemic, of right. social uprising, so much to talk, you know, so much just material to just to feed off of, and and you got an election coming up. Um, you just get you just in such a, a hot moment for current events and just just to be an american you know it's like you feel like this has to resonate as a true artist you know is going to reflect you know that the, the you know that their the art is going to imitate whatever is going on in, in the current events so i just i feel like this is like that that form of expression just has to be vented out somehow some way so i'm gonna pray i'm gonna pray i'm shoot, i'm gonna pray for a d'angelo album to come out because <laughs> Cause I've been hearing that you know he had enough material after after uh, Black Messiah. I'm gonna pray for all these brothers to come out and wow. just express themselves. That black art. I mean, you think about shoot. I'm gonna go back to like you know jazz, you know, and and and, and soul music and and James Brown and the Civil Rights era. Um, you know, Curtis Mayfield. I mean, all these brothers, Marvin Gaye. 
I mean, you know, when stuff was going down with 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 um, you know Kennedy and 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 Martin Luther King and and Nixon. I mean, these brothers are right there on it. Just you know, just just getting you know, you know, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. You know, all this. You know, they, that's you know, do this. This struggle has to be has to, at the end of the day. All this struggle has to be like a a, a spark point for, for beauty and art. I mean, I feel like that's just how the way the way the, the world works. You know, just you think about some of my favorite songs are just based on you know heartbreak and pain and misery and just that's all going on right now. So I feel like you know if it's not if it's not now, it's going to be soon that that these brothers are going to come out because that's the that's what they do. They express themselves. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. There hasn't been a greater time for woke material than right now. The woke window is wide open. And if you're an artist right now, a recording artist, even if your thing wasn't being conscious before, this is the perfect time to show that side in you now. You know, because people are looking for food. People want to be fed something that speaks to the times that people are living in right now. Not necessarily a fantasy, you know. People want to be, people want to be, um, encourage people want to see hear some hope people want to hear that i'm not the only one going through this right you know people need something. to hear that. Be something to get through the day with you know and even if, even if not just the gamesmanship of just you know seeing that nas came out jay came out jay yeah. electronica came out you know just yeah. who else come out? who else you looking for listen y'all already know i got a bucket load of releases to come with <laughs> That's what I want to hear. The joints, you know, I, the joints that I missed. That's what I want to hear. Because I know you know those. And this year has been probably the... Because of, you know, doing out-the-box talks and releasing episodes every Friday, it's really pushed me to kind of be in the know of so much that's coming out. Um, So this is probably the... This year has probably been the most I've been tapped into releases ever like i got a like i said i got a bucket load of releases and it's going to be really difficult for me to narrow down <laughs> my favorite albums this year um i want to say that j electronica album a written testimony is definitely up there in my top albums in the beginning of the year it was my number one I don't know if that's going to change. I don't anticipate before the year is up that um, Act 2 will surpass it. But it may be definitely on my top 10 too. But I, I got a lot, man. And I, I just say, I'll just say that. This, it's going to be very difficult to narrow it down. I also got to do my um my my top ten for the R and B and soul, which I've been kind of out of the loop on. Um, I did like in in June of this year, I did a top ten for the hip hop, and I also did a top ten for the R and B and soul. Um, so I got to get back on that. But um, yeah, I'm gonna be excited about that show, man, when it does come. Um, we do got to do a show on um, Black Thought. Well, what y'all feel? Should we still do the show on um, Black Thought's album? I wanted to. I was thinking of combining it with this show, but I said, you know what? Let's just give Jay his, you know, review on on this particular project. Um, and because I really haven't gotten a chance to tap fully into the Black Thought album too, but you know, being that he's definitely one of our top MCs out. I think it, you know, we might we might be due for a show on his his album before we do our last show. What y'all think? Should we yeah, go for it or should we scrap it? What y'all think? I think we should, you know, leave uh, Black Thought for Thought. Give him his rough flowers and give Je his flowers. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to go into Black Thought tonight, but I was saying, what y'all think? Y'all want to do a show on this Black Thought album? Stream of thoughts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, sure. I can, I can, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, and that's the, we talk about this today's day and time. That's an album that's definitely needed for that. So, definitely, definitely, yeah, man. All right, so listen, before we close out, I had to bring this up. It's not necessarily related to the particular, you know, subject of the show today, 
but it's hip hop. I'm not into the battles and stuff, but it's an mm -hmm. interesting thing happening right now that I just really wanted to put out there. This this versus between Rhymes and Ti. What are y'all thoughts on this whole situation that's transpiring between Busta and Ti? First and foremost, do you feel like that's a versus that's worthy of seeing? Sure. I, I think it's worthy of seeing, but I don't really think there's any contest, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Bust is an institution. He's an institution by himself. I mean, if we're talking about from, from the leader's days to row, row like a dungeon dragon to put your hands up my eyes could see and on and on past the Kufasa, yay, like it, He's got songs of Mariah Carey, you know, Jan Janet Jackson. Jackson. I, I, I don't I don't even think they're in the same stratosphere. But what's really I'm taken aback by is the interesting, amazing stories that Buster Rhymes has given. He was in every studio session. About his <laughs> career. He was in every studio <laughs> session. <laughs> about his fist fights with Charlie Brown and you know how he got kicked out of the group twice i'm like what he was like he got kicked out of the group before they even released their first album you know i never knew <laughs> that. wow you know he's a and he's just he, uh, i don't know if you guys saw jopra you know uh you know fat joe's uh ig <laughs> jopra <laughs> That's what, that's what he calls it. I mean, it's yeah, he, he's, starting, he's starting too much with everybody. That, that Joe's Oprah, so he calls it J Jopra. Yeah, and, Jopra. yeah. Jopra. and um, he um, he had an amazing interview with Buster. Buster, he's the kind of person that you don't really have to do much. You just ask him a few questions. He just goes with it. Yeah, he gets very, just, very right. humble, very knowledgeable dude, and he doesn't get sung enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. In our culture. Buster's an MC that's lasted. You know, I don't think Buster Buster stood the test of time. I mean, he hasn't released the album in a long time. Oh, that's another album, <laughs> Extinction Level Event Two. Two. That's coming out like that's coming. Isn't that like at the end of this week? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, October thirtieth. Yeah, it's Friday. Look at that, Mark. We got another one. Ex ELE, ELE two. Cause oh that's because uh, Anderson Park I think I think he has a single Anderson Park or a video. Yo, probably yeah. He even went into the science behind all of these crazy titles he used to give his albums over the years. You know, like <laughs> from the coming when disaster strikes, right? Extinction <laughs> level of event. Anarchy. <laughs> Anarchy. You heard Rock Marcel. Yeah, safe no more. That was the one with Dilla on it, right? Dilla, yeah. Rock, Knots, um, maybe even from it was, it was the joint with um, wasn't it the joint with Raekwon on it? What oh, man, it was such a hard record. Yeah, oh, uh, hold on, let me see if I can find it. That yeah, baggage handlers, no, that wasn't on there. It was a bust with baggage oh. handlers, that joint was knocking baggage handlers. Woo! Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's crazy. And Buster got hits. Like Buster, I think, I think, but like Buster got hits. He got gritty records. He got all types of records, man. He's Buster is the he, ultimate day walker, y'all. I gotta yeah. tell you, I gotta oh, tell you, the, my favorite Buster joint, and I, I, I encourage y'all as a weekend I, project, go back and listen to um, Future Without a Past because that album is crazy. That's back in the unbridled days of hip hop. No sample clearances, songs having like 10, 12 samples on them at the same time, beat switching up. But feminine fat. Feminine fat. Oh, he gets feminine behind that. Yeah. Funk. He said, This is how the first album came out. They were already broken up. Dante Ross signed them, right? Yeah, SD 50s. Yes. Dante Ross, just so you know, Dante Ross, y'all. Is an, it was a executive, um, uh, record executive at, at Tommy Boy. At first, they were going to get signed to Tommy Boy, yeah. but that whole situation went down the drain. 
and he got, I don't know if he left there or he got fired from there and he went to Electra, mm-hmm. which is yeah. where leaders ended up getting signed. And then he got a deal, but by this particular point in time, they had broken up as a group. You know, Buster was already doing his solo thing, making his solo tracks, and Dinko and Ch- and, and, and Charlie was already doing their own stuff. But when Dante came back to Charlie and Dinko, they was like, Yo, where's Buster at? They was like, oh, no, nah, you know, he left the group, so, you know, we'll, we'll still do this. He was like, Nah, no, man. He's the reason I'm signing you. He said, "Yeah." He was like, "Listen, if I'm going to give you guys a deal, it has to be three thirds, not two thirds." <laughs> so they call up. They're like, "Oh man!" So they called Buster up, and they was like, "Listen, man. Um, we know you left the group, but we got this deal on the table that I think you'd be interested in if you get back in the group. You know, let's make this happen." So Buster's like, mm, "All right." I don't know, make it to my advantage because at this particular point in time, when he got kicked out the group, he was just having his first child. <laughs> he just had his first child. And what him getting kicked out the group was not the fact that, you know, y'all didn't like my music or you don't want me to be in the group or anything. Y'all cut off my way to eat. <clears throat> mm. That's that's what really made him pissed off. You know what I mean? So he was like, okay, since y'all want me back now, and I already worked on a solo material, he was already recording Feminine Fat. So he and did that. Then, those were solo joints. That was going to be on his solo album. Early solo album. So if y'all take me back and if we get this deal, those two tracks got to be on the album with the songs that y'all recorded. Mm. And that's how that that's how that album got released. What's what about that to me, man? Like, do, do y'all feel like 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 um, you said, sure you would you you would you wouldn't mind seeing it. You feel like there's a better matchup for Bus? What? In versus. Um, I don't know if there is a is a better matchup. For I would have liked to have seen a DMX Buster Rhymes. I, yeah. I think in terms of energy, that would have worked. Energy. Like yeah, who? I, I still I still think Buster takes it though. I mean, he's. His, his 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 depth of work is just too much, you know. It's too much. And the thing with verses is, it, it also includes features. And I know Buster got some features, man. He got What's he on um, flavor in your ear remix. Flavor in your ear remix. Remember, I, he, yo, he he. We're talking about that. scenario, yeah. y'all. Yeah. Rile, that was a- rile like a dungeon oh. dragon. That was a coming Scenar- out scenario two, scenario one, and scenario two. People forget about them songs. You know, he was the guy that he was saying basically that everybody wanted the rah rah on his on their songs. You know, so he had to kind of shake that. That's the reason why by the time flavor in your ear, man, huh? See what happens with extinction level event two, man? But well, we might have to do a show on that too. Yeah. And the first extinction level event was that was the whole Swiss beats and oh, Neptune's so. era, you know what I mean? Of which yeah. he used them a lot on there, you know. Yeah. So we that, definitely, that, we're definitely going to get the dance hall buster on this one. I, I know it. I know it's happening. Dance hall buster is going to be in effect. That's <laughs> another thing. He he's one of them. He's one of them hip hop artists that that was able to do the whole dance hall merger pretty well too. He's That's the good. guy that can do a record with. Anybody, yeah, and he can. He, rub, he rubs shoulders with anybody. He can be. He rubs shoulders with uh, who? Uh, Christina Aguilera or Britney Spears to a Dilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hanging tight with Dilla. I have a, a track from him on every album. <laughs> Relationship with Dilla. Yeah. You know what I mean? Tip. Yeah, Tip is going right to your house, chilling with Tip. Oh, yeah. What's the joint? It's the joint that the high tech joint that's um it's called music for life. You know that track, A Level. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know it too, Mark. Yeah. Music is for life with Marsha and Brocious on it. It got mm-hmm. Dill on it, it got Nas on it, and it got Bust on it. Mm-hmm. The way Buster, that's actually one of my favorite tracks of all time. Mm-hmm. High tech joint, music for life. Right. Um 
the way Buster comes on and he speaks. Like, that's the other thing about Buster. Buster is a master at speaking. Right. He tells a story. Like, on the record, not even rapping. When he talks on a record, he like, you feel his words, you know, like he's so clear and precise, you know. He's a great storyteller. I urge you guys to list to watch the the Vlad interviews, the the ones that Vlad did with him recently, and the one that Joe, that Fat Joe did with him. He is just gonna give you so much. He talks about his interactions with Tupac, <laughs> how Tupac and Q Tip almost got, you know, physical at the Source Awards one year. I don't know if you remember that, Mark. Like. Remember that time when Tupac like kind of interrupted their um, acceptance award speech at the Source Awards? Oh, that that that, that results in altercation afterwards. Wow. Because they, they, you know, he 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 all, you know, his song is starting, and you know, they thought that he was trying to disrespect them, but th- that was the era of the dat tapes. Mm. You can't rewind no dat tapes, you know. Right. Once you play and you hear your music, it's no DJ. You got to get out there and you got to start performing. And when that happened, they took that as disrespectful. So they came and they was rolling deep with the Zulu Nation. Mm. Tupac had his peoples, you know, so it was it was going to go down. Okay. And, and, and come to find out that you know, later on uh, Tupac uh, met up with Busta and he, was, he knew that Q-Tip was tight with with with, with bus and he was like yo listen man i really want you to try to hook something up so we can actually talk with q-tip i like i like a tribe called quest Uh dudes i didn't want to i i meant no disrespect by you know what they thought because he you know tupac had this attitude of being arrogant that i'm gonna just go and do whatever i want to do type of stuff but Mm -hmm. that wasn't the case but that phone call never happened Mm -hmm. you know so um they ended up with each other tipping, you know, cute um Tupac and they, they ended up um piecing it that piece it up. But you know, I thought that was an interesting story, you know. Yeah. Oh, listen, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna spend too much time on bus. I feel like we're going into a whole other show right now, but I just wanted to bring it up. I think I think it, he's worthy for a show at, p- potentially with this, you know, this this new album that he's got coming out. But um, I just wanted to bring it up because it was something that's, you know, current in hip hop right now. Um, I feel like we're going to see a, another powerful versus before the year is up. I think it's been a really big year for verses and just what's transpired out of it. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up to hear y'all thoughts. But getting back to the main topic of the night, you know, we're getting ready to close out the show. I want to thank everyone who has been tuning in. Um I guess the last thing I'll say in reference to, um, you know, this J Electronica project, the a written testimony, um, I would, I guess I'll say this. Let's just talk about J as an artist, per se. Would you all consider, and then, you know, the last time we spoke about Elza being a top five, top ten MC, you, consider- do you guys consider J Electronica to be a top five MC. Definitely. You know, the last time we spoke about right. That's yeah, cool. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I th- think the biggest criticism, like, you know, just the biggest sort of global criticism about him is that that body of work really isn't there, um, you know, in terms of volume of songs and what what's out there. If you go into your favorite, you know, music streaming service, you probably, you know, you won't find much until like, this past year. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's really a matter of quality versus quantity. Like, really, does he have to have that much volume if in one project he's showing so much versatility and just so much talent and, and um, you know, just, I mean, just he's omniscient, you know what I mean? He's just omnipotent in terms of, like, what he can do, what types of songs he can go on. When you when you when you still holding your own on tracks with no real like drums on them, and you're really like you're still captivating an audience. I mean that speaks that speaks a lot, um, you know. Just and, and just how how deep he is in terms of how much you 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 need to sort of digest in terms of the content that he's talking about. <laughs> he's like throwing like jabs about you know Malcolm X or you know 
um, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, talking about, you know, um, you know, his whole human emotions and, and what's going on. And, 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 and also too, just, just his rhyme pattern and his scheme on top of that, like digesting all of that on top of it and just realizing the context of everything is so much to really just digest. So, I mean, in essence, his body of work is there. You just really have to appreciate what it is. And this is a man, like I've talked about it before, like, I think, just as an MC, I feel like he's more comfortable rhyming on the microphone than he is like just talking to someone. Um, you know, have you know, he, he's he's more of a listener. You know, what I'm saying so. So when 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 he he's rhyming, that's really his outlet. He's more of his preferred outlet is to rhyme rather than speak or hold a, a lecture. I mean, he this brother could probably hold a lecture on many different topics, but he feels more comfortable rhyming about it. And that itself is just a unique gift where you really just can't overlook it. And, and you know, in my mind, that, that puts him up there, you know, in those that top that top category. And you know, everybody's categories are going to be different. Um, well, of course. You know, but is he a caliber of that? Is he worthy of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, the only thing that he hasn't really done, you know, is really put out like, I guess, if you want to put this in the he's hasn't really crossed over or put out that like. He hasn't had that commercial success, um, mm. or that, you know, whatever that that merit you want to that that benchmark, that metric you want to put up there. You know, he hasn't really achieved that. But in terms of like respect and recognition, I think he's he's accomplished, you know, more more than, you know, than than many and, and most have. Uh, so I, I still would put him up there just as an as from a truly artistic form. You know, this brother is just, you know, he's a treasure. Okay, I, I think I think he's in a class by himself. I think he's in a class by himself. I don't think you can, based on everything that we've spoken to him in the last two hours. You know, like I don't think you you know it's the same criteria that you can compare from any artist that we have ever met before. If you're talking about Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, I've yet to come across any artists that do stuff like that or that does stuff like that. Um, no, no disrespect to anyone else, you know, any of the, the, the dope MCs, but I don't think he even fits that, that top five criteria is there's no one else like him. Mm. I, I think, I think he's definitely worthy of a top five. He might not necessarily be in my top five, but, um, but then again, he could be, I, you know, I, I, I have a solid top three. Um, and usually the other two. It's I, I I can't <laughs> say who it is, I um, but I know who my solid top three is. Um, but I think he's definitely worthy. I'm I'm curious to know that because he doesn't have a huge body of work in terms of albums, if that somehow kind of puts him out of that. Um, that um you know that that category of top five but i think like mark was saying in terms of you know lyrical recognition like he definitely is up there I, and i think what a level is saying in terms of him not sounding like other people um i think that's what also makes him shine i think you know as an mc you the the best mcs have their own sound i think you know when you talk about the best like you, you really can't say they sound like anyone else um i think when wasn't like jay electronica getting compared to nas when he first came out do y'all remember that he was getting compared to nas he was yeah, but i think he he was able to find his own lane over time, his voice he was the down south nas that's what they were saying you know mm -hmm. and he's he's pretty much found found his own lane by now you know he's um I said he's he's just an artist where you can't really put him in a box, so to speak, and that's what everyone's trying to do. I think this is what everyone's frustrated about is that he doesn't fit this kind of criteria that we want to categorize him in. You know, he doesn't, and that's what's frustrating, and that's yeah. what people, makes people not like him or not want to deal with him because I can't categorize you. You know. Yeah, we got some comments here. Uh, said Fontano gave it a four out of ten in terms of the review saying uh, uh, Ballet 733 says he thinks Jay is overrated got some, some says Jay Electronica can't write a good verse in the studio he takes ages 
and ages to write a good verse. Do y'all do y'all think um do y'all think his 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 time the time that he takes to write a verse is a factor? No. Like I mean, you you there's people that will probably have that same kind of response. Like, you know, um it's taking him way too long. It's it's an acquired taste, you know. It's like, you know, certain everyone wants instant fast food. They want fast food. Some people don't want to have to wait. You know, it, it, people, some people don't want to have to wait to wait to wait an entire week or an entire year for some hot tamales. You know, hot tamales takes a very long time to make. And if you want, if you want the best tamales, you have to wait. Some people don't want to wait, and what happens is, as people are waiting, they the 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 level and the window of scrutiny increases even higher. So if this is not what I wanted, based on what it is that I waited for, I'm getting ready to throw it in the garbage. You know, so I mean, and everyone's entitled to their opinion. It 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 is what it is. I mean, you you like what you like. Shout out to Rosa, yo. She said it's no a factor. Big ups to Rosa, man. She always too so impatient these days. They they want content ASAP. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly, exactly. I yeah, I mean, you know, people have their their perspectives. I'm 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 okay with with the um with with the weight, you know um. I I I you know I mean me and A level we spoke about this before. I stopped waiting for all these anticipated projects. Like I stop, I stop waiting. You know, when it when it comes, you know, I like to be surprised. You know, and I think this was definitely well worth the wait. Particularly a uh, written testimony. I feel like you really got to be disgruntled to to hate on, um, you know, Jay Electronica. People are mad, bro. People are angry. And angry. People are actually more angry with Jay Electronica than they dislike him. Which is crazy because all you have to do is just not listen to him. But for you know <laughs> he's whack. Hmm. That's interesting. I mean, there's there's just this sort of intangible connection that all people have with him. You know, repulsed by him, they they, you know. Is artists that you feel like either you love him or you hate him? Like, do you think so, that's the case with people? Probably. He probably has a love. And you know what's interesting about him? He talks about that throughout his music, y'all, if y'all are listening. Yeah. All throughout his albums. He's talking about everything that we're talking about in this live that we're talking about right now. <clears throat> the, the, the tension and the scrutiny and um, when I look in the mirror, all I see is bars in the middle of the night trying to squeeze out bars. Bish me a law just so y'all could pick me apart. Yeah, that's a hard record. That's a hard track. I he love puts track. everything in his life into what it is that he's talking about. What artist you know does that these days? Nobody, because they don't want you to know who they really are. He, he's unapologetic and he, he he's not ashamed of showing you who he is, you know, even with the flaws. People don't want you to see their flaws. That's another thing about what I can actually appreciate about him. It's like, I mean, he's genuine. He's genuine. That is all you really want nowadays, because, you know, if you listen to whatever the radio or what's popping or what's popular, what's streaming, it's far from that. It's basically Instagram rap. It's just, you know, they want to tell you how, you know, no one wants to tell you about having a bad day. They want to show you, you know, when, you know, when when things are going well, that's what they really want to put out there. And, you know, I mean, it's cool. I mean, it makes it, hopefully it makes them feel better or it makes you feel better. But it's really that like we, you know, as as a listener, I really want to hear that human connection. And that that's what to me being human is, is having, you know, showing all of it, not just, you know, the sunny days, but, the, you know, you want, you know. You, you want to talk about your insecurities or your misgivings or your your um, regrets or, you know, he, he does that all in, in, in just one body of work. So 
Um, that's just who we are as people. But, you know, again, this, some people just don't want to get that deep into it and want to, you know, scratch the surface a little deeper. And I can I can understand that. But, um, you know. Yeah, some people yeah. just want to hear a great metaphor and be wild with punchlines, you know, throughout the entire project, you know. My car costs more than your house and this, that, you know. I mean, that's cool. I mean, that's, that's you know, <laughs> hey, that's an interesting thing. Let me ask y'all this. Do y'all feel like this with these two albums being released this year, do you feel like that will spark motivation for Jay Electronica to release new albums? Like, do you think we might get another album from him in 2021 or 2022? Do you feel like this changes anything? Because I feel like he's delivered now. Like, he's delivered a written testimony, and now Act Two is out. Like, does do you think this gives him motivation to kind of be like, okay, let me try something different and let me see it? Because you know, according to you know the statement about um a written testimony, it took about what forty days to complete. So if he gets in a groove like that again. We might see another album. Do you think that there's a possibility we see something again from him soon and not and it doesn't take 10 years? If I, if I had to compare Jay Electronica to an R&B artist, I'd compare him to D'Angelo. So you think it's going to be like that scenario? Going to D'Angelo, be- how many how many albums has D'Angelo dropped his entire career in the last 20 something years? You're right. But shit, he didn't have us waiting that long. But first this, album. <laughs> those, those are still great albums. He after after Voodoo, what? How long we had to wait from Voodoo to 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 um? Yeah, but that's that's an in between. I'm talking about this is how long we've had to wait for for this out for the for at least a written testimony. But my my point is is that greatness cannot be measured in time. Greatness is just what it is. It's just what it you. is. You know, I think what we're trying to we're trying to have it fit in time instead of just appreciating it for what it is. The reason why written testimony came together the way that it did is because it was organic. Yeah, that was an organic effort. He told you before the album even dropped, forty days, forty nights. <laughs> this is not something that I made over the course of how many years I took. All right, I, I did tw- out of these twelve tracks. I'm using three from there. And using five from what I did last year, no, everything's fresh. Yeah, he might be one of those kinds of artists. You have those kind of artists where I was like, nah, I got, I got to do something that reflects who I am right now, where I'm at. But here's the thing, a level. I really think that we would not have gotten a written testimony if Jay didn't, Jay Z didn't get involved with it. So mm-hmm. he might be one of those artists that take a long time, but. I think Jay-Z had something to do with pushing this album to come out. We probably still wouldn't have gotten it. We can make the same argument about D'Angelo and Questlove. We, who knows? We might have not have heard Black Black Messiah had it not been for Questlove constantly getting at, at, at D'Angelo with all, of the, with all of the drug problems he was having and everything else. Sometimes you Sometimes it takes one of your peers to kind of pull you in and say, hey, listen, bro, you know? This is his first album. I mean, I, I mean, I get that as far as a debut is concerned. We got Brown Sugar from D'Angelo years, years ago. You know what right. I mean? Before the Voodoo album. But I'm just saying, like, with him, for his first official album to come out, it I think it it took some extra parts in place, and I think Jay Z was a big part of that. I don't see a problem with that, though. Yeah. No, I, I'm not saying I have a problem with it. I'm just saying I I don't I don't know if I don't know if that would have happened. You know what I'm saying? If we would have gotten the release if it wasn't for that. And I'm curious to know if he can do it again on his own. Because he has yet to release an album on his own. <laughs> I mean, we could say we could say that um what is it? Um act two has come out, but it hasn't come out under him putting it out it was it was forced to come out due to the leak so we haven't seen this brother drop something solo on his own and and the question i'm asking is does these two releases that are out this year motivate him to eventually put something out on his own again i mean on his own for the first time or does he go with another 
collabo album. Like, do you think that it has a factor in him releasing again anytime soon? I don't think so. I'm not gonna hold, think so. okay. I'm not gonna hold this entire experience to him for the rest of his career. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm over it. I'm over it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So for me, like at the end of the day, I'm not gonna continue to hold him accountable. I'm just gonna appreciate the diamond for what it is. I hear you. I'm gonna appreciate the diamond for this. I'm gonna continue to peel away the onions and in a, in a world that is just so fast paced and oversaturated with music that, you know, I'm listening to the next album, the next two months, another album, another two months, another album, another two months for me, I'm going to peel away the latest news. And if he drops another album 15 years from now, I'm still going to buy it. I'm still going yeah, to, I, to I it. Hear you. you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me. You know what I mean? I'm not um I'm not I'm not I'm not critiquing him just so we're clear I'm not critiquing him I'm no, not I'm not, not hating on him I'm just I'm just asking the question. Yeah no and I I I agree I do think I'm sorry Crow to cut you off but I'm gonna agree with you brother I think I think you know I think he does need some prodding I mean if he does there's there's actually a, a, quite a bit of like like material that's out there with him like just being a feature or collaborating with someone else. It's not really like his like own joint that he put together. Like, let me put this out. Um, and I think that's just who he is. I don't think he's like, I think he's more of a listener than he is. I mean, I think his, his approach is more of a passive and he's like, he absorbs a lot. And rather than him taking the proactive saying, Oh, I got to put my stuff out, you know, or I'm gonna get left behind or forgotten about. It. I don't think he really thinks in that direction. Um, and I also think, too, like, you know, we, you talked about it before, Al, is that, you know, his own genius is the reason for his self-criticism and and his, you know, I think he doubts himself a lot, too. And that's not really unheard of in, in testimony. Yeah, I don't think that's really heard, unheard of in the greats or the, the artists that we revere the most. I mean, Andre 3000 has said it like. He's documented it in interviews how like he really was his writer block writer's block was really because he was self conscious and overly critical of himself because it was like you know once you get put on that pedestal it's like every word that you jot down you think is going to be like talked about or critiqued or what have you rather than just let it stand your genius stand on its own and I think Jay has that vulnerability where he can you know be affected by it. But I think just him as a person, I think it's going to take some prodding and some, 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 you know, some coaxing and 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 and, and um, you know, almost manipulating it at least to say, like, Jay, you got to get this. Like, let's what other stunt we're going to pull for him to get his his work out or his material out. Um, which you know, again, the process is a process. But um, like like Al said too, I was completely content with just like I was really just thinking like it was going to be another ten years until we get another you know, piece of, of, of work for him. And I was kind of like, okay with that. Um, and you just, you know, his, he is one of the few artists that can get away with dropping, you know, just like D'Angelo, like if he doesn't, I hope it doesn't happen, but if, you know, there's no follow up to the black Messiah, I'm fine with it. Like, you know, like that yeah. black Messiah was amazing. So was voodoo. Um, so you have that and it's just, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, I think there's a certain, you know, expectation for especially in hip-hop for artists to come out every two years every three years and you know just don't some of them just don't work like that you know what do y'all anticipate he will come with next even if it took 10 years which is a long time i'll say it's funny because i don't even know like that's a good question because it it, it also as what's going to happen with this this project what's going to happen with this this act too, okay, is, is unfinished. We're waiting for, for, for sample clearance. We're waiting for whatever, Erica Badu's verse or whatever it is, or or Kanye. I think that's definitely probably what's gonna happen next. But how? I mean, I mean, it's just gonna be an it's gonna be an odd like. Okay, here's Pat, here's Act Two. And it's like, yo, we just we just got Act Two. It's like, is it gonna be like a super deluxe version? What is gonna happen? Like, I don't know how you're gonna follow up. I'm optimistic that we might get a more polished version of this album. But I, you know, I, I'm I'm just like, he's one of those rare artists that, it, you know, it puts him in a very interesting position in terms of his catalog right now. Like yeah. the album that we were all expecting him to release, he actually released it. I mean, granted, it's not, <laughs> it's not in the way that we would have liked for it to be released, but it's out, right? Um, and he's comfortable with it being out. Um, and but and then we get a written testimony, 
But I mean, I can't say there's many other artists that I could be like, oh, I don't know what, what could be next for this guy. You know, like this this album, this albums that we're anticipating, right? But a lot <laughs> of the albums that we're anticipating are albums are like third or fourth or fifth albums in these artist catalogs, right? <laughs> They're coming after this album is his first, like the one that we were anticipating as his first official. And we got a written testimony, which is not what we were expecting, but we're happy with that. And then now we got um act two, but it's like, what else? What else? You're right. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that is a very interesting point because only Jay Electronica is like every artist, they drop an album. You're not asking what's going to happen next. You know what's going to happen next. They're going to drop another album, but it's just right. like <laughs> you, you can't. You, that's no guarantee with Jay. The question yeah. of when it's crazy. Yeah, and it's, and the question is when, but it's also like what to me now because I'm like, <laughs> what what do you follow up with? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another Jay Z collabo album, like it just gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> like, like I'm not sure. It's. it's, it's <laughs> We're thinking about it right now, I'm just like, I don't it know. Might, it might be like a rock album with the bullets, like, <laughs> <laughs> like we know, we know about like detox, right? Like, this is detoxes. If it ever sees the light of day, like it's coming after the chronic, is after it's coming after 2001. We've already seen Dre kind of put it down, yeah. you know, or even Mad Villain, we've seen Doom and Mad Lib put it down already. But like this particular, it's like this is the debut, and you're like, what's next? You know what I mean? And I think that it has to do with his mysterious um persona too. I can't like, even yeah. give Rock Nation or him the credit for like marketing genius. Cause I think I don't think there is any rhyme or reason to what like I don't think it's out there at all. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just too random, too crazy to even think about. It's, but it is it is crazy how you're like. Is he going to come out with another album? Is he going to be 10 years? Like, what? <laughs> you know, but I, I would say that just like I would agree with you, A-level, whether it's 10 or 15 years from now, I'll definitely be looking forward to it. Um, and if we get something sooner, that would be dope. I was just I was just posing the question. To Listen, see man, <laughs> nobody has been more, more frustrated with Jay Electronica than I have, yo. <laughs> You're, you're completely happy with I, I, I've, I've <laughs> changed my whole perspective and my whole mindset of this waiting at the time because yeah. if I did it, I would end up hating him, right? Yeah. And not yeah. wanting to deal with him no more. Period, you know what I'm saying? Can you so, imagine what the label's going through, like, yeah. I changed my mindset. <laughs> yeah, I honestly don't think any fan could really hate a project to the point that, or you know, just to this anticipation of a project to the point that when it comes out, they don't give it a listen. Right. Yeah. But I've heard a lot of, Oh my goodness, you made me wait this long for this. <laughs> you know, I've heard a lot of that. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to, that in this, in this case, a level, you're actually happy with what you got. Yeah. Wow. And um, I think, I think the same has happened for Nas for you. Right. Cause you've been like one of the biggest Critique. Yo, like I said, this is this is a great year for A level, y'all. 2020 is a great year for A level, man. I'm a very, very <laughs> great year for A level. That's for sure. continue with Black Thought. Absolutely. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm getting Black Thought now. Oh, wow, this is great. <laughs> so I'm 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 good. <laughs> I'm good. Listen, brothers, I thank y'all for staying with me tonight. It is after 12. <laughs> oh, man. We have crossed over into the next day. Yeah. Um, I don't want to keep y'all too much longer, but thank you for being available. I want to thank everybody that has, you know, tuned in, commented. Shout out to Sacred Soul, Talia Gem. Shout out to Zach. Shout out to Kate De Niro. Uh, Ballet 733 and shout out to Rosa. Big shout out to you, Rosa. Thank you shout so much for support. Shout it out. Uh, shout out to John who called in earlier. Yeah. Big up to you, man. I appreciate your um your insight with that call. Uh shout out to Kai who also called in earlier, too, man. So um 
Brothers, again, I thank y'all for, for being here tonight. Any last things y'all want to say before we log out? Uh, no, no, um, that's some good. I want another note. Has anyone heard that Gregory Porter album? I haven't heard Gregory's new album, the, the Jack. It is a beast. The that will be on your list, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, yeah that's a ride. That, it's like, yeah. What's up with Kamasi Washington as well? Too, is he did he put out anything out recently? Dinner party. Dinner, gotta, dinner party. Exactly. You got it, Mark. That that it's dinner with party. Our, it's with uh Robert Glasper and um who's the other dude that's on that? Is it Terrence Martin? Terrence Martin, uh ninth wonder. Oh uh, yeah. Glasper. You got them all, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like an EP, it's like about I don't know, maybe four to six tracks. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's mostly instrumental, and then there's a part two with um, actually more um, vocals on it, and and uh, I guess MCs and yeah. vocalists. That's an interesting collab, too, man. Yeah, like yeah. Those are some heavy hitters in their own right, like Ninth uh -huh. Wonder, Kamasi, Kamasi Washington. Um, what did you say? Um, Ninth Kamasi Terrace Glasper. Probably Glasper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a pretty dope project too. Yeah, I think I think the 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 story is that Ninth was just sending beats over to them, and I think that he sent like I guess whatever how many tracks there are eight or seven, and they liked them all and they just they just performed on top of the tracks and and that was a finished product. It was it was really well put together. I liked it. Dope, dope, dope. That's what's up, man. So um yeah, I mean the year they we still got projects. To be released before the year is up. Um, as you as you said, Greg Reporter, I gotta I gotta make my favorite R and B and soul. I've been slacking with that, but I, I will have something. I think Tiana Taylor's album is really dope. By the way, that might that's still like my top R and B album of the year. Uh, right. But it might change as I go back. I just think it's a really good record. Uh, CeeLo Green put out a really good album too. In the you know, in the first half, I think it was in the spring. He put out a nice, nice rec, a nice album as well. Nice R and B album. Look at us. We talking about R and B now. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> yeah, but um, man, let me just put up some stuff. Uh, I want to kind of make sure people know. Visit the website outtheboxmedia.com. We got our merch store up, uh, outtheboxmedia.bigcartel.com. You could get uh, snapback hats like the one I'm rocking right now, as well as um, T-shirts, um, sweaters, hoodies. We got all the Out The Box merch. And I'll definitely be updating more merch as well. So, um, you know, definitely follow that. Um, you know, if you feel what we do, you like what we represent. If you've been rocking with us since 2009, if you just got on and you love what we do, um, you know, definitely support by copying a merch at the link at, on the screen. Um, also, we got a Patreon page. We have exclusive artist interviews. Mm. So these are interviews that have, well, it's really like interview clips that never been, has never been released, you know, um, to the public. It's only been for subscribers. Um, so if you've been checking some of the recent interviews, um definitely go um there's like there's um there's like bonus um clips audio clips of some of those interviews that hasn't been released public and it's specifically for subscribers so go visit the patreon.com slash out the box media um and then lastly for donations if anybody want to support out the box you know whether it be out the box talks the podcast the team stuff that we do on youtube or whatever you you know you 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 feel um you you feel resonates with you man in terms of the content we provide definitely you know just hit up the paypal.me slash out the box media you can donate whatever you would like man any amount is appreciated so Absolutely. um definitely just want to say that man and um other than that brothers man thank y'all for tuning in i want to thank all of our everyone who tuned in via the youtube we really appreciate you um and so next time I'm gonna let A level close it out. Can I just say one one thing? Hey, go, ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. Uh, free J Red. Free J Red. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you are, brother. Hope you get up, J Red. Said that. 
Get back up in here, boy. Yeah. But I knew he said he, it was a possibility he might not have been able to make it. So we it tonight, man. Thank you for that, Mark. Yeah, definitely. Big ups to Jay Red. He's usually on the panel. We'll, we'll hopefully get you for the next one, which will probably be Black Thought, right? Um, so um, we'll talk, brothers, in terms of like what when we want to coordinate that. Um, but yeah, anything else you wanted to say, um, Mark or A level? Nah, A level, it's on you, bro. You what happened to peace? <laughs> hey. Hey. We out of here. One love, one love, everyone.